Hello and welcome to the show. If you're enjoying it and want an ad-free experience, consider signing up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash the 101 podcast. Get early access and exclusive content on there as well for less than the cost of a cup of coffee. Links to ways of supporting the show are in the description. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy this episode. Welcome to the One on One Podcast with your host, Juan Ayala. I think you can actually look at it from like the Harry Potter kind of like, you know, what we're shown magic to be perspective, but that is a very high level and it's probably only possible by this bloodline that we were talking about earlier, this human sized Nephilim. Those are probably the beings that could do that type of magic, the Harry Potter type floating and flying on broomstick. They can probably do this as for, oh, and also the face shifting from one to the next that is most likely a a thing but as for us we have a more divine magic and it comes back to like what you were saying before we have the ability to do it all without magic wands and full moons and crystals and one of the number one thing rituals that we can do which i do not think this hermaphroditic being can do is Welcome back to another episode of the One Podcast. Make sure to follow me on social media at the One Podcast. One One Podcast on pretty much everything. The One One Podcast dot com for everything else. We got the Occultist Monday. We have the comic book. This is a value for value show. Patreon dot com slash the One One Podcast. Everywhere you know where to find me. And today we are joined by a very special guest. Waters above. What's up, dude? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited for this. I know we were on a couple times together, but this might be our first. Yeah, this is our first one-on-one podcast. So this is our first one on. Yeah, yeah. This is our first one-on-one podcast. So (laughs) waters above might or might not be a homunculus. I'm not 100% sure yet. He has been on the show a couple times, but we're here to hopefully decipher this matrix. So I don't know what. What we got planned for today, we're kind of freestyling it, but I'm really happy to be on with you, bro, because you have a lot of a lot of good content. You have a lot of awesome conversations, and whenever I've had you on, you've always blown people's minds. You have a lot of lady fans on my show, bro, because you because your voice. The people love the voice, dude. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing on your channel. But shout out to all the shout out to all the ladies out there yeah ladies and probably some guys too some dudes are like that that dude's got a nice voice bro so <laughs> where, where can people find you dude where where do you where do you go to find waters above yeah so you could search my channel on youtube uh waters above as well as i have a patreon account for some exclusive content i do a podcast over there every week it also gives access to a private discord which is lit it's a lot going on especially just like a community of like-minded people getting together and decoding, getting into some of the cryptocurrency side of things, which is another part of my work, as well as just, uh, you know, a kind of a place for people of like mind to thrive and to communicate. So I have my website at watersabove.com, and that's pretty much where you'll find everything else. And you do a lot of I know you're when people for when I first looked at your channel, I saw the crypto. I know you do you have so much more to offer than just crypto. I know that's one of your things as far as the business side of it goes, right? But you get really deep in some some really I mean the occult, mysticism mm-hmm. and what I would regard as how to decipher this reality, how to really break out of the matrix i know you you compare yourself to patrick star as of recently that lives under a rock and really stays and (laughs) 
Because <laughs> being in this community, dude, it's so hard. I get, we get the question all the time, well, what's all this for? What are you putting all of this information for? And I go, and you broke it down perfectly. He's like, if you know you're a fish and you know that the fisherman is trying to fish for you, you don't grab the bait and you just keep on swimming, but you're still a fish. Because unfortunately, the way that this works is you still have to be part of the matrix, for lack of a better term. Yeah. You still have to be part of this organic. I think it's now I'm leaning more towards an organic simulation of some sort, not mm-hmm. a binary hardware computer, but more of a, a organic maybe sentient being right something something's up something fishy's up i can't really i have no answers but you know being understanding this this matrix you're one step ahead of the next guy over yeah you know what i'm getting at? yeah you could protect your you could protect your um your posture and i think that's really what this is about you know like understanding that there's going to be struggle and there's going to be these issues, whether it's because of the collective's belief, you know, what happened with C-19, everyone believed in it. Therefore, it created that energy. Therefore, we all had to like kind of go along with it, whether you're awake or not. Uh, and those moments are going to keep happening. And there's parts of the world right now that operate like the way that C-19 did across the board. Well, they operate like that on a, on a daily basis, you know, where they'll just have a blackout ritual once a day or they have whatever they're doing with uh, weather modification, you know, you, so it, I kind of look at this reality, like a big game of poker where you're dealt these cards, you know, every casino kind of has a different vibe and different energy. You could call that your country. You know, when you get there, you're working with different currencies, but ultimately like there's still the same goal of winning, maybe protecting your winnings or pre- preventing losses. And I know it seems kind of an odd way to put it, but when you really start getting closer and closer to what's happening here regarding the roles and the player characters that are involved in this casino, well, you could be a player and that's what we call the collective. And then you start to elevate to where you become the, you become the dealer. And that's kind of like what a decoder is. You know, you kind of get to a place where you've already been there. You kind of get what's happening. You're no longer operating in duality consciousness, looking at reality as good and bad. You know, when somebody starts to decode symbols, they see the number 666 and they think that's evil. But no, it's carbon, six protons, six six neutrons, six electrons. And you could go even deeper, right? Uh, It's just, it's at the base level. You feel like when you lose the game, like it's like the the dealer fucked you over, the casino fucked you over, but that's not actually how it works. You had something traumatic happen in your life and you need to know how to respond to that better or in a way that isn't blaming you need to take personal response self become self-reliant take personal responsibility and this is this small little tricks of the trade and strategy to level up and then when you get in that dealer position now you know a different you're looking at it from a different angle and then eventually you're going to upgrade to being the casino owner and when you're there then you know shit's different you, you now you're looking at the players and you're looking at the dealers and you're kind of just analyzing where things are at so, you know, watch the movie Casino <laughs> and you'll 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 understand what I mean. It's funny to look at a Hollywood movie and, and perceive it this way, but it, it really is. There really is something to this idea. <laughs> so when you're the player, the last thing I'll say is you have strategy. And if you have a shitty hand, it doesn't mean that, you know, you just fold and give up. You could bluff and you could win a f- you could win with the shittiest cards and still bluff and have a good enough poker face and win the round. And that's how this, this whole world works, man. Like every animal in mother nature is bluffing to survive. Every cell in your body is trying to survive. There's no right or wrong there. There's no like life sucks and life is good or, you know, success is positive or negative or, you know, depression or no, your cells and and animals and everything that are happening in mother nature is just happening to survive, sustain, to maintain its posture. So, you know, that's really kind of the the basic thesis that I have to how I perceive reality. I'm no longer looking at the elite or the so-called apex predator, like they're a problem anymore. I don't blame them. I just accept them for what they are. They're hungry lions and we're wounded hyenas. Where their food source? Where their food source? They're not even our species. If you really analyze what they are, and you could 
look back into history and see that they've never been like us. That's why they use us for our vitality and belief. And if they could herd us into buildings, it makes it even easier for them to conquer us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether that be a school, a church, a hospital, etc. I'm going to ask some hard questions today, bro. Mm -hmm. Are they lizard people or not? Right. That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're tares. They're, they're human-sized Nephilim that are hermaphrodites that are not the same consciousness as us. And that's why they worship hermaphrodite deities that are all based in sun worship. And we are not them at all. They, and the biggest threat that they, that we could, um, the biggest threat would be us no longer fearing them. That would be the biggest single threat to this thing that people call lizard people. They're not lizards. The shape shifting thing is another like, you know, flat earth level base, base level psyop. It's cute. It's really, it satiates the thirst of the conspiracy, the conspiracy uh, theorist. But when you really start looking back at the origins of what's happening here, the statues that are being put around all the cities and the worship of these uh, deities, whether that be Greek, Roman, again, all being plagiarized, going back to Egypt, Babylon, Canaanite, you're just going to see there, there's a common theme, which is that they're all hermaphrodites. They are pretending to be human because they can look like human form, but their consciousness is like a totally different energy. It, it operates at a totally different frequency and it needs to maintain us in a fear-based frequency in order for it to feel a sense of power. And that's how they control us. They control us literally by keeping humanity in a consistent state of fear. And the last thing to say is, and this is a kind of a belief I've developed as well about them, is that they have no creative essence to them. So this is why all of Hollywood and everything that they show us on these black cubes are simply just the repeated mythological story time and time again. They have no creativity. That's one thing that if they were to be jealous of us over, it would be that. The fact that we have the ability as Again, we're not their species. We're different. We have the creative essence. And the people that are at the forefront, are they being controlled by these entities or are they are they these entities? Well, how does that... Are they puppets? Are they some sort of meat suit for them? How does that work? How, how does that play a role in Tall? Because we, we are presented these... I've, I've always said that even the United States has created their own pantheon of gods. If you look at all the presidents, it's, it's a pantheon. I mean, and not only that, but if we, if we tie in the whole secret societies and the way that they, their aesthetics of how you're saying this Egyptian aesthetic, this, yeah. this Eastern aesthetic, right? Cause because Western mysticism really came from <laughs> Crowley and guys like him mm -hmm. and the new age. Yeah. So all those, you know what I'm saying? Like that came from somewhere. What, what's the, what's the, what's the gig? Is it, are they meat suits? Are they being controlled through occult powers? Are they being controlled through some MK ultra? Are they being conditioned by other people ahead of them? Are there handlers for them? Cause we always hear this in this, community right all that, that yeah. it's got a handler joe rogan's got a handler xyz has a, a handler what's good <laughs> what's what's going on there well that's a great question and i guess we need to quickly define who are we talking are we talking about like famous celebrities and politics like because i would call politicians in the modern day almost like celebrities you know like joe biden donald trump they are celebrities they're not actually like when you think of a politician it could go very very um micro right it could be down to your local like people in your town it, it, same thing with freemasonry when you talk about freemasonry it's like well you go down the block you literally juan you go down to your local freemason lodge have a conversation with them and you'll quickly see how little they know about anything you will literally run circles on them all day with occult knowledge yet again they are part of this so-called fraternity brotherhood but even at third degree they don't know their head from their ass because they didn't seek anything. They just joined a club. And the real people who are at the top of this, their blood, they have to be of a bloodline. 
that is the big difference between what we're talking about, I guess, with this idea of celebrity versus the apex predator, the the elite or controller, whatever term you want to use. Um, there's a there's a huge difference between a player character like um, George Soros and uh, Kanye West. They're serving different roles. They have different purposes and their agenda to how they are kept at the capstone of the pyramid of belief that we have towards them being powerful beings. So really what it comes down to for me is that it's all belief that we have towards these people. If we believe that they're talented or believe that they're geniuses or believe that they're influent or rich even, if, if we believe they have wealth, these are all sorts of things that elevate these beings up this tower of Babylon, if you will, to get closer to, to a god. And that's why they're worshipped as, as gods. Um, so I don't know, I guess, can we clearly, can we kind of delineate what, what, what we're talking about here, whether we're looking at celebrity or like a real, a real elite, like a, like a <laughs> Jorge Borgoglio kind of character. Like, who are we talking about? Yeah. I'm talking about the people in the limelight, any, any really, anyone that you could write that passes that threshold and is considered elite by, and you make a good you're asking a question because what, what makes you an elite? Is it the amount of money you have in your bank account? Or is it, I believe it's the, right. what Gustav Le Bon term, the prestige that they put out this, how you're saying this prestige, Status. but yeah. are we giving them this prestige that they put out? How you're saying, are we self prophesizing? Yeah. Are we powering this sort of egregore, this sort of, and that's one of the things exactly. that if there is an egregore type of exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the things about being in this community was like, Oh, well, this thing is going to happen. We, and I just pulled up the state of the union because he's daddy, daddy, Joe Biden's going to be talking today. Right. I'm, I'm excited to see that. Cause he's like this weird automata, you know, that like you can't even really articulate what he's yeah. trying to say, <laughs> but this I'm, I'm referring to anybody. And you mentioned movies, right? We're going to be jumping around here a little bit, but you mentioned movies and they're cinema magicians, bro. I mean, this is one of the Coppola said this and I'll pull up the quote here in a little bit that, you know, old magicians and, and the magicians of now, the, the, the cinema magicians are the same thing. And I think right. that how you're saying that archetype that plays over and over and over again, Joseph Campbell and the hero of a thousand faces. And there's a reason why they emulate this, no matter how there's always movies are very basic. And once you get to the level of being able to identify the codes, Right. By being in the, mm -hmm. by, by talk, I talk about this a lot. I decode things. When you get to that level where you're able to automatically pick up on things, it kind of sort of ruins everything for you, but you start to see the differences, yeah. the subtle differences, which is I enjoy a good plot twist, but at the end of the day, yeah. the core of the story is the same thing. And I believe it's because not only are the, are these beings or these entities or these, whatever they are, they lack that divine spark, how you're saying, and they can't think for themselves for a lack of a better term yeah. where they don't have that creativeness. And I think that's what they are so jealous of when it comes to correct to the humans or what are humans being I like my, my buddy said that to me once. I was like, <laughs> we're humans being not human beings, humans being. And I think that they want to emulate that. And I think this is what, a lot of these ancient cultures, for example, with the tarot or stories like the Book of Enoch, where they're trying to give people. And that's why I love alchemy so much, because it's interdimensional. It's a topic that's it's physical in this realm. It's spiritual. It's a philosophy. It's like any which way. And I think that they also leverage that, too. They use that art, the art, the, yeah. you know, the magnum opus as part of their their in their toolbox, because it is so powerful. Right. And anything that we produce is art. I mean, the podcast, videos, music, whatever it is. And what is it? Life imitates art, right? Or art imitates life, whichever one, you know, you know what I'm saying? But I think by them putting this in these movies, that that subconscious thing is bleeding into this. And through that medium, if you get what I'm saying, and not, and that speaks to our, our, our primal nature it goes back to our ancestors and that's why 
we're so captivated by these arts of movies and music because it it brings us back to when our ancestors were around this fire right trying to f- make sure they don't get eaten by a saber tooth tiger or whatever it is yeah and what they're doing with cinema is that it replaces the same like egregoric appetite if you will through the through this hero story so if you don't worship the sun directly well they'll get you in a church and then you'll worship the sun in that way and if you don't want to worship the sun in the church then you'll worship it at the movie theater because you're just continuing to worship Horus in different forms. So, yes, it is. if anyone wants to become a supreme decoder outside of learning how to decode symbols and perhaps getting into looking at alchemical symbols and all the symbols of the times, well, let's go study your mythologies, and you're going to start to see, like, wow, every single Hollywood movie is just the same exact Jupiter, Saturn, or Kronos Zeus story over and over and over and over and over again, which is just going back to Set and Horus. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why also you have the syncretism of all these ancient religions, ancient gods, where it's the same guy just with different names. And then the church got to the point where they quite literally just bunched up a whole a whole pack of them into one guy. And they sent that out yeah. to the people. And my favorite was when they were trying to convert the Nordics and and all these people, the Vikings and they would just take their pagan gods and turn them into saints. Like, hey, yeah, this is your saint. Now he's part of us. Because, and, and I grew up, dude, religious. I'm not the most religious. I do believe in God. I do believe that there is a higher power. There is a higher creator. There is a something running all of this because... And at the same time, sometimes I think, is, is it all bullshit? I, I think like that too. I get nihilistic sometimes. <laughs> you know, you get in those moods, bro, where you get so not. Ni- I'll be driving and I'll be thinking like, why is the paranormal a real thing? Are dogmen real? Yeah. Is Bigfoot real? Nah, what if it's all bullshit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll just keep driving. Like, it's all bullshit. And Well, it, it, okay, but it is real though, because think about it. Like, think about what's going on here. It's just belief. If enough people believe in it, it becomes real. You didn't know about Jesus until you were told about the man. But before there was that character, there that character didn't exist. And again, it's just plagiarized and the baton is handed off from one age to the next age. And you start to decode it and you see that this Jesus character is just another player to fulfill the same storyline that I just talked about earlier. It's a hero. It's a savior. That's it. So when we get to the idea of God, like all God is there for when it's outside of you, is playing, you know, when you talk about belief in the way you just did, you're talking about duality because you're like, I either believe or I do not believe. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the problem. That's not how rea- That's not how the organic realm works. It's not as it's not like that duality. It's more like a pulse or a breath in and a breath out, and it's continuous and it continues for survival. So, anyways, to get back to the God thing, it's the mind of man that creates God. That's it. God did not exist until our minds designed it. So when the mind designs it, the reason it designs it is because it needs to, again, to maintain its posture in its survival or lack of survival. When it feels like something is imposing on its survival, it needs to blame something else now. Because if God gets to be the good character, then who gets to be the bad character? Then we go right back to duality. Now we need to create a Satan or a Lucifer or a Phosphorus or a Venus or a fucking whatever. That's just what we like to do because it's a thirst we have to not become God. Because when you become God or be a God, which is just a witness, by the way, that's all God is. You are a witness. Your left eye is Isis. Your right eye is Ra. Your pineal is El. Is Ra El, the Holy Trinity in the skull. The skull, the skull, Solomon's temple. This skull creates it all through thought, thoth. So just think how we create these things because we like to have a rhyme and reason for why things are going the way they're going. Because of, and this is the final thing I'll say man is a memory. That's all man is. And two, we're just working with our thoughts. 
So time is thought. That's all time. Time is literally thoughts. We need to kind of balance everything on the scales of existence through birth till death, the mortality. Then we use these thoughts to either keep us feeling comfortable or challenging through uncomfortability. And this is why some of us seek these deeper truths. Some of us are going a little bit further. We're more willing to burn the, ca the calories to research whilst the average person isn't has zero desire. They are literally okay with the idea that they were born and they die. And they give up everything to an externalized God. And then they obey. They're obedient. Those who seek truth are really seeking to be uncomfortable. That's the issue here that I have with the truther movement is most of them don't want to be uncomfortable. They like being comfortable by creating these kind of like, how do I say it? They, they, they like to just make reality tunnels. Correct. And it's commitment based. It's, oh, I learned that NASA's bullshit. So now flat earth is my God. <laughs> oh, I learned flat earth is bullshit. Now concave earth is my God. Oh, I learned concave earth is bullshit. Now, uh, the moon reflection theory is my God. And it just keeps being replaced. And it's the prior thing you, you look at as an enemy. And all I'm saying to everyone is just look at it all as a necessity for your growth and your expansion. A trauma that happened in your past is not a bad thing. Some, somebody that took advantage of you or a shitty thing that you could look back on, don't blame those people anymore. Learn how to forgive them. The same NPC that you're making fun of right now, you were once them at one time. And there was a wise individual looking at you, talking shit about you. So you see, it's a graduation process. I'm just saying don't commit every step of the way because there is no commitments when all of it is being created by your thoughts or your comfortability with the, the temperature of the thoughts. If the thought is too spicy and too hot, you need the shade. So it's, a, it's like a self-regulating mechanism that we use when we're on the path of seeking truth. And what you, to touch on what you mentioned earlier, that you're gonna you're, you're making um, I can I can hear them now, bro. I can hear them. I can read them in the comments right now. Some some people are getting uncomfortable. Some people are feeling Good. some type of way. <laughs> you know, what I'm, I'm, saying? I'm literally I'm here to <laughs> waterboard you. So because I had to waterboard myself so many times to get to a place where I learned that the only reason it was uncomfortable is because I had a weak ego. When I strengthened my ego, which another thing, this is going to hurt a lot of people, but I, that's what we're here to do. When you strengthen your ego, you regain access to your intuition. And you know that this discomfort that you're feeling right now is there. It's there and it's there for your growth. Just like when you're getting better at push-ups or pull-ups or lifting more weight at the gym. Your first day in the gym, you might only be able to do a couple pull-ups, but then the micro tears that form in your muscles and then heal... And then the process of the practice, you you start noticing that, oh, now I could do th two and I could do three and I could do four pull-ups. And then one pull-up, which used to be difficult last month, is now easy. Knowledge and wisdom and gnosis is just the same. It is a workout. So if you're uncomfortable or you're offended, it's because you're still on one pull-up. And eventually you'll get to a place where four is now easy and then 10 is easy and then you're not worried about the offense any being offended because you just see it as someone's perspective perhaps something that's almost like art right there's no good or bad art or wrong or right art so i urge people when you're seeking truth don't get caught up in this whole like agreeing or disagreeing thing we're not here to agree with each other because when you always agree that's called worship And worship is for slaves. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking right now, be weary, be weary or beware of unearned wisdom. We have this one here. Wisdom is not a product of schooling, but of lifelong attempt to acquire it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, right? Because a lot of people will be like, oh, what's all this for? I can't answer that. What, what all this is for? But... I think it was on your stream from this past week and you were talking about like life, like we're all, we are lives. We're not living a life. We are lives. We're all human lives. 
And that's, yeah, that's what, that's what, cause every, right. They've, they've programmed us since I was a kid. I remember being programmed through trauma, through they used now, here's the thing. I don't, I don't want to disrespect anybody's beliefs because I do believe that some people regard, and we can get into the NPC stuff later, but regardless mm-hmm. of their NPCs or not, whatever, let's just put that aside for a yeah. second. The people who are still in Plato's cave, the people who are still watching the shadows on the wall, right? Those people, some people need structure. Some people need a, a sort of structure in order to guide them in life. So that's what I feel religion does. It serves as a structure, as a scaffolding, if you will, mm-hmm. a mental scaffolding for some individuals who need that, which is, it's not a bad thing if you need that, right? The problem is when they, when they, when they take it. And at least my issue is when they force it upon you, right? We can, we can exist together. I came from that. I came from, I remember the first book I ever read, bro. And I have my Bible. I keep my Bible here. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first book I ever read was the book of Revelation. As a 11 or 12 year old kid, bro. Okay. Wow. The book of Revelation. I was, I've always been fascinated with the weird and the supernatural and the metaphysical and all this sort of thing. The, The Bermuda Triangle was the first conspiracy I ever looked at when I was in like the second or third grade, bro. So I've always been interested and as a as a human you're interested in oh how is it gonna end right that that's been that how did how did we get here and how does it end so by me reading the book of revelation i i was really into the church my grand i I grew up with my grandma she's the one that raised me super religious and i played guitar for a very long time at my church i we toured around we did services at other churches we did services at juvenile centers I, i saw it all bro I've seen this. I've seen miracles happen in front of me. I've seen all of that. Now, what turned me off to everything was, again, the human element, the the ego. How you're saying this thing that arises from from nowhere, and that just really started to like. I'm like, how are you able to be up on an altar guiding people when you within yourself don't even know where you stand? And that's where I was. I was like, I'm not sure where I'm at. How can I be? this instrument for other people that's not okay to me in my head i'm like that's not okay so i decided to kind of step away from that and the rest is history but the point being that i was kind of sort of forced into that through these traumas of reading right the first book i remember my grandma telling me they're going to cut my head off if i didn't accept jesus in my life and the rapture came right the rapture came if i wanted to go back after the rapture, they would have, they needed to come. I needed to suffer. And I'm like, damn, that's, that's hardcore, bro. For a little, you know, for a kid, mm-hmm. 12 years old is pretty, is pretty young, right? It's not, it's not too old. I mean, and to really, that took a, a, a firm grip on my reality for a long time until I finally moved out and I started high school, finally had a car. Right. I moved out, started high school and I started living with my dad. So I stopped going to church, but I had left church a little bit before that because again, I had already seen things. And then after the fact, people in my church, a lot of them came out of the closet, right? A lot mm-hmm. of them came out of the closet, the same people I was on that altar with who di- who knew that they didn't know where they stood mentally or spiritually or whatever it is. And then you're going to put up this facade of leading people. That made, no, that made yep. zero sense to me. So that's why I chose to step away from it. But and 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 real quick, just really quickly, that is called shape shifting. So was I the shape? When you hold, we're all doing it. It's funny how we make fun of these this conspiracy lizard shit David Ike made up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. So this is the thing: we're all shape shifting. Let's take personal responsibility for this, guys. When you go outside of your house and you start being a different person just to be a part of society, that is literally shape shifting. When if your mother is ultra religious and your and your wife is not, and mm-hmm. when you go over your mother's house, you start being a totally different type of person to just fit into the environment, you change to the temperature of the room. And a, 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 the, what I believe being enlightened is, is when you no longer change to the temperature of rooms. You walk in as the light and people could fucking feel that and their temperature changes because you entered that is a Christ. 
that is literally in a crisis an ascended master. It's somebody who's not changing and shape-shifting to everybody's bullshit and beliefs. It's the one who is the enlightened being, the illumined one. Mm -hmm. But anyways, get back to what you're saying, because I think what you're saying right now is so funny how it's the antithesis, the standard religious tactics, which are cult-like, you know, don't leave or you'll get AIDS. Don't leave yeah. or this will happen. Don't believe. It's standard. If you study cults, which I have at length, I know all the mechanisms and all the tactics, and it's no different than all of these sects of these Abrahamic religions. But it's great what you just pointed out, These this kind of pretending to be accepted bullshit. Mm. That and obedience right there, that, that drills down to the core of your soul, and it makes you something that could really have a lot to deal with and work through later in life. And that's passed down genetically. It's much harder to break. That's Correct. passed down genetically. But here's the thing, dude. Like I said, I respect everybody's beliefs. I do believe in a God. If it is this, my friend calls it Saturnian depiction is the old man with the white beard sitting on some throne in heaven. If it's that, if he is some black dude, Father time. Who know, yeah, Father Time. If it is some black dude, like they do Black Santa, who, who know? We don't know. The point is that we don't know, right? These these concepts yeah. that are so above our pay grade. And I tell people all the time, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know. I'm here to have an interesting conversation and ask interesting questions, right? But don't you see how our first inclination is to go create a person? Yes. Then we make the person in our image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is standard how it proves that we are addicted and fetishize the matrix we love the blue pill we just don't want to admit it ignorance you is love bliss, being right? a body <laughs> so when you create a when when somebody wants to have the philosophical conversation of an externalized god and then you go oh it's a guy oh it's a guy with a beard no it must be a guy that's black no it must be a, a no it's a woman actually you see it just becomes this like master it's a bukkake masturbation on top of like the you know the 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 obelisk of belief mm -hmm. you're all just having fun in this nonsensical uh you know and and it's fun i guess if you like playing that game but as you become more enlightened you see that that game never served you it's not designed to serve you it's designed to control you it's designed to make you obedient to worship it's a technology it is almost like an artificial intelligence taking over you it's cheap dopamine Mm -hmm. You being like this is cheap dopamine. It's akin to scrolling through TikTok. It it literally feeds and gives off the same chemical reactions. It's it's the Ouroboros, right? I mean, I've always I mean, I've always asked myself: Is the Ouroboros regurgitating itself into existence or consuming itself? Because if it is consuming itself at all times, it needs no sustenance. It feeds on itself, and that's ex essentially what we're all in right now. We are constantly feeding on ourselves. It's a form of uh, auto cannibalism where we are in this matrix. We're on this hamster wheel and we will always have just enough of what we need to keep us going. And for some, that's beliefs. For some, that's money. For some, that's something else. Right. We're always chasing this one thing. And it goes back to what I was uh, talking about earlier. Where it's like we're programmed to think, what do you want? Well, the first question, bro, what do you want to be when you grow up? Back yeah. to the whole life thing. Like, what do you want to be? I re you remember that, bro? Be, uh, wh wh what do you want to be? Oh, I don't, I don't know. And then you have societal pressures. You have cultural pressures. You have <laughs> familial pressures. And you put that all mm -hmm. into whatever it is. Now, I also do believe that we are the philosopher's stone, right? And I like the way that Manly P. Hall puts it, where... These experiences that we all go through are what is putting those facets on that philosopher. So what's chipping away and creating that, you know what I'm saying? Where it's creating that philosopher's stone and, and it, it's necessary. How you're saying being under pressure is necessary going through these experiences. And one of the things I've been getting into recently is phenomenology, right? Where someone's experience is real to them this is why i don't disregard any any ideas or any thoughts mm -hmm. i respect everyone's ideas and i hate when people reach on the like or they comment or something they go oh, well it's flat bro i go dude can you just 
I consider every, I consider every single one of my episodes a different dimension. When you turn this podcast on, you're stepping into my I'm the demiurge here, okay? We talk about what we right. want to talk about, how we want to talk mm-hmm. about it. And if we want to acknowledge these other things that don't relate to our conversation at hand, we will and if we don't, we don't. You know what I'm saying? And, but people get so wrapped how you're saying they identify with these ideas with these concepts and they want to push it on other people and that's okay yeah, they, they call themselves they call themselves flat earthers like just think about it that's just part of <laughs> one this is part of the conditioning of going up to your child and saying what do you want to be when you grow up that's all part of it okay it's all about outcomes the reason why our reality is kind of like so based in time and materialized in a time scale that we can't even touch called tomorrow or when you're 50 or when you're old or whatever terms it's working against you and they're doing it to you from the start and let's get back to the pressure concept well if you're born religious then you are under that pressure to maintain that religion and bring it into your family structure if your father's a lawyer and your father's father's a lawyer and your father's 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 a lawyer you know great granddad daddy's a magnum come loud whatever the fuck they may this is exactly what it is you need to be handed the baton and then you have the lightsaber now and you better be you better be like in step in sync with the cult of this family lineage through title through title through last name right so this is all kind of feeding the thirst of the of the program the programming language and if we're looking at this from a simulation theory perspective, this is what excites me most to talk about it. But what I like to get into is this is what the makes your nipples of, hard. Water's involved. Is this what it, preci- precisely nice. all six of them? Nice. So, so when I'm thinking about these things, I always get back to the okay. We're calling ourselves these terms, whether it be flat earth, earth or simulation theorist, or you know, and and I'm okay with that. But don't you see how you die with the belief of that thing? If that thing fails and something comes along to debunk this, not only do you have this innate desire to fight for it, to literally be in the army of the flat earth, because right, if somebody comes in and changes up there and, and gives you an alternative vision, especially if it's the ball earth vision, now you're at war with them. And it and it's this ongoing battle of the ages. And when you st- when you really start to see uh how this technology works and keeping us all divided it starts to make more sense to me why this realm even though the 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 fact that we have libraries in our hands in our pockets wherever we go we have access to infinite knowledge but yet we're more divided than ever it's because we use this knowledge through the outcome through the title through the identity and never in the present moment and when we exercise gnosis in the presence and see it for what it is and as an extension of each other like you're a reflection of me you're a teacher of me if you make me feel uncomfortable i am now in a position to learn i'm challenged by you we can never be challenged if we're only around people who go across uh who keep communication and have so-called friendships or have communities that are based in agreeing on the con- on the same concepts across the board this is how cults develop this is the reason religion has stood the te- the test of time right and we see this in religion as well my god's the true god no my god's the true god no my god's and now that we fight a war over it and it's like wait but the 10 commandments straight up say thou shalt not kill so you guys are so obsessed with your version of the truth and you're so offended by somebody else's version that you're willing to literally have a blood ritual sacrifice to somehow solve your problem And we do this intellectually when we play the game of flat earth versus ball earth. So that's why I've, I've surpassed it. And it's funny because my name is waters above, which a lot of people quickly identify me as a flat earther because of this. And I'm also not saying that the realm that we are currently stationed on is round or a ball. That's not it. I'm just not commitment. I'm not making commitments yet. Yeah, that that's, and I reserve the right to change my mind at whatever point in time because I'm always learning. And I, and I, that was another one of the things going through the church. It's, I always said, I'm going to hell in somebody else's worldview. 
and they're going to hell in mind. So how does this cancel itself out? I think that's what it does. I think it cancels itself out, bro. If, if, and that's why we're in this Ouroboros, this endless thing where it's always, it always seems like there, ha something happens, right? This fear porn that they present us. And not only does it serve as sustenance for these otherworldly entities, whether they are the archons, whether they are the reptilians, whether they are whoever they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they keep us in this fight or flight with one another, I think that also keeps reality sort of stable, right? Chaos. What is it? It's, what's the saying? I'm trying to remember it. Like order up chaos. Yes, order out of chaos. Order out of chaos. Because if you really think about it, if you keep everybody in this loop and everybody's just shooting everywhere, for lack of a better term, it would just keep everything kind of sort of stable. <laughs> if you get enough, what's the, the endless monkey theory? If you have a whole bunch of monkeys typing on a typewriter, eventually all of the stories of Shakespeare and all the pieces of literature in the world will eventually be written somewhere along that path eventually yep. instead of so there's there's sort of like not to go into duality but there's two simultaneous uh living sentient like systems like they are living and one is order out of chaos and the other one is just accepting and allowing the syncretism so if we think about the idea of exiting the game, like getting out of the soul trap or getting out of this prison plant or whatever they want to call it, you can look at life as order out of chaos, which by the way, that's the system of the apex predator. That's the only thing they can work with. That's all they have to work with. Okay. They have no creative essence. This is why they maintain this this realm this way exactly the way that it's going and you're right it'll continue through the ages if it maintains itself like this or individually the self can determine to can determine that that order out of chaos system is actually inorganic it's ai like it's not actually the organic system the true organic system would be syncre syncretism it's just it is what it is it's happening and there's a lesson to be learned through everything it's not chaos. It was scripted. You know, they call it scripture. This is why a lot of these things in Revelation come true. And it's because it's the playbook. Mm -hmm. It's a playbook. It's a script. When you're an actor, you read the script and then you play it as a role. I'm going through Borges here because this is a guy I've been... I was introduced. I knew about a work that he had done, but I didn't, you know, when you know about something, but you don't know who was behind it. Well, I knew about him. Mm -hmm. I knew about a, the, the, the library, the library of Babel. And he, he's, he's this author that his stories are almost like thought experiments in a way. And what we're talking about, right? I looked up the infinite monkey theorem. The infinite monkey theory states that a monkey hitting keys at random on a typewriter keyboard for an infinite amount of time will almost surely type any given text, such as the complete works of William Shakespeare. And I, I love thought experiments. Like okay, this. so so really quickly though, this is what Chat GPT is, or whatever that that AI. <laughs> yeah. No, like literally, like AI is not self thinking. This is me it on is a just podcast. Compiling this is this is literally me if you guys want to know what i look like <laughs> uh, this chat is why i don't G show myself gpt or okay yeah I, I i think i think this is what it's called right like people yeah. have been sending me this shit but i have zero interest in it because i i really don't i really have no time but i get it i, I get it i people just need to remember that that is this theory that you're talking about right now this chimpanzee typewriter theorem oof yeah, it, it is. Who are who are the chimps giving it the data? It's us. <laughs> Our Google searches. Oof. You want to know how facial recognition technology gets better? It's because you guys take selfies. You unlock your phones with your faces. It's not AI that's designing any of this. It's that it's just collecting, and it's organizing, and then it's figuring out how to just.
pattern recognize. So it's taking your input with all of what I just said, the pattern recognition of what would be the answer that's desired, and then it'll feedback that to you. And if everyone is asking the same question, it's going to consider, it's going to basically come up with the same results every time. But this AI kind of shit that they have going on right now, it's really ramping up. You could see a lot of artwork, so-called artwork. It's not real people anymore. It's just people typing in a word into some sort of simulation thing. And it's coming, it's feeding back, you know. So this is going to become our future. You know, like all aspects of so-called creation is not people are going to be too lazy. They're like, why the fuck should I make a painting when I could just type in a sentence into yeah. some fucking website and yeah. then it'll feed, it'll just piss out an answer. I also Like think... I'm just saying, yo, I don't want to hear anyone complaining about this shit anymore. <laughs> Stop complaining about the AI takeover. Stop complaining about like art is dead. All of this creation shit is dead because it's dying with your search results. You are the one that is the grim reaper. Damn. coming to with its scythe it's us like we just need to take personal responsibility you can't blame elon musk it's not like these guys aren't at fault here show the me some respect on my show bro <laughs> <laughs> it's like bird man put some respect yeah, on my name put some respect on my name so yeah dude i mean i didn't even think about what you just said and you just kind of like brought it full circle for me we are the chimps. You are the monkey. Yeah, you're the infinite monkey theorem. It's been happening since the internet was designed and given to you by who? The Pentagon or something? Who gave us, was it CERN? CERN, bro. What do you, th what do you yeah, think is there happening there? Because let's, let's, let's go wild, dude. Let's go wild today. Let's, let's talk about it all. <laughs> what do you think is happening there? What, what, do you, what are your thoughts, Waters Above, on... Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've talked about deciphering reality, being able to recognize, being able to look between the lines. We've talked about these otherworldly leechers that mine off of our energy, and they're only there because we give them the right to be there, right? As long as you think about them exactly. being in this position, we give them the prestige that they have over us. You do believe there are ancient bloodlines, right? There are ancient people that go back into antiquity. The, we, well, we haven't really talked about alchemy that much. I want to get into that. But phenomenology where people experience their own realities, they enter and step into their own reality tunnels. And you can't take that away from them. You can only help them come out of that, step out of that reality tunnel in a way. We've covered God. Now we're at AI. What? But what do you think is going on at CERN? What are your thoughts on alternate dimensions, alternate realities? Since we've talked a little bit about this reality that we're able to perceive ourselves right now. What about mm -hmm. altered states of consciousness or other reality, the possibility of other realities? Do, do you buy into that at all? Or is that part of the PSYOP too? Do you mean like if I was to take DMT or whatever, talking about Mandela effect? Like what? It, okay. Um, well, getting to, you know, with CERN, all I needed to see back, back when was the dancing Shiva statue they put in front of their facility and that sealed the deal for me. Like I get what this is all about, but how that ties into Mandela effect and all of that. Yes, that is a psyop. And again, it's through belief when you push an idea out and it, okay, really quickly, where does flat earth come from? It comes from the Pentagon. The Pentagon gave that idea of flat earth. It spread it throughout the internet. That's where its origins were. Of course, there's pictures that go back to ancient Mayan. I mean, we have Newt with the firmament in the Egyptian uh, portrayal of it. The we scenarios. have the Norse portrayal. But this is us today with flat earther indoctrination, looking back at that ancient art and making the assumption that that was mm. them showing us a flat earth, right? That we have to rem remind ourselves of this. So anywho. It's the infinite monkey theorem, out bro. We're typing away. And, <laughs> oh, it's a flat disc. Oh, it's a fucking donut, right? Shout out to donut. No, no, it's yeah. okay. It's a hot dog. Or, okay, I get it. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. So this is it, right? Like we, we're, we have to get uncomfortable uh, in order. We got to step in the sauna for a long period of time to really see what's going on here. Getting back to this Mandela effect thing, I, I very quickly picked up on what it was. It was the internet just shoving out as many of these so-called connections that are kind of anomalies, if you will. 
And if enough of them are out there, it creates this belief that, yes, it must be CERN, the Large large Hadron Particle Collider. It must be fucking with our timeline and uh, ripping little micro tears and the whatever. I get it. I get why it works. I get why people believe in it. Uh, does it have much of any utility? Absolutely not. Um, but there is some fascinating shit that I've seen on time travel that's been shown to us through the lenses of Hollywood. Like, uh, I think a great example would be that show Dark. I don't know if you got around to seeing that. It's a, I think it's a German show, but it's amazing um, about time travel and showing you going through caves and entering portals. And it starts showing you how one player is at, like whose girlfriend is it's like his girlfriend in one reality, but in another timeline, it's actually his mother. <laughs> and in another reality, it's like his, his he's like the uncle. Back of, to the future. Yeah, dude, it's, <laughs> but it's, re it's really well done. And it goes all the way and all the way till you find out that the main character is Adam. And this woman that he's been tethered to his whole life, in one version, she's his girlfriend. The other version, she's his like mom or, or cousin or some shit. Well, eventually, once they go through all of these timelines, they get down to the point where the reason they were tethered together since in all of these versions was because they are Adam and Eve. So that could be the theory behind soulmates or twin flame or whatever we think of with that. Like, why does it feel like the person that we're meant for? We feel like we've known them forever. We kind of have that like bond mm -hmm. with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this gets deep into all the shit that could be going on with the theories around CERN. You know, it could be part of the simulacrum, you know, like some sort of artificial high level tech, high, high level technology, artificial intelligence. I don't know. But I, I really, um, I could go so many places with that. I, I'm just going to quickly assume, though, humans need to remind themselves that we have a very tiny bandwidth of frequency that we can perceive. So, with this very limited bandwidth of perception, we should be the last player character to develop belief in any of these things being real. Ultimately, a majority of it is a psyop. So it takes you to have discernment and to really discernment. It takes you to have that discernment to be able to determine, you know, what mm. utility does this have for me if the Berenstein Bears was spelt this way or not? Because <laughs> that was what quickly, that was the shit that quickly got me like, uh, it was like unsavory. I'm like, I can't use this stuff. It's just, it's more fast food for the conspiracy theorists to play around with and nothing nothing progresses with this information at all the dancing shiva statue is says a lot this is definitely a symbol of creation destruction energy and you know with the fact that they created the internet or, or distributed the and what would be the proper term do they distribute the internet to the public no they gave you access i guess i mean you you okay. tap it you this is my personal opinion. You tap into it, right? That's why it's a portal. Yep. You know, you sign in through mm -hmm. the portal and you tap into it wherever you are. You sign in. So I don't think they so much distributed it. They just gave you access. Yeah. Yeah, but when it comes to the psychedelics and all that shit, I think that's really an amazing um, avenue to drive down as well because people who do DMT, they're seeing similar things, um, you know, seeing robot elves and shit people that are um taking ayahuasca in group settings are all seeing similar things all together in that group setting people saying that they're seeing these evil looking fucking clowns and shit mm -hmm. uh, multi-armed beings you know they're seeing beings with six or eight arms well where do we see that right and keep seeing that in the hindu uh interpretations of stuff so you know what i mean like i think uh, um I heard UG Krishnamurthy say something that I really agreed or it really resonated with me. He was saying that all of these Vedic traditions and all of these so-called ancient uh, mystic writings that we're getting was all created by people who were high on mushrooms. Like he literally said that. And I was like, wow, this is pretty interesting because when you hear people who do these DMT trips they're showing you these beings that you would see in paintings and, and drawings mm -hmm. back from, you know, Shiva, Brahma, et cetera, Ganesha. You see some fucking elephant God. That's the kind of shit you'd be seeing in these altered states. Um, so th those things could exist, but 
I don't look at them that way as much as I look at all of that stuff as parts of our body. Uh, but that's a totally separate conversation, and that might be a little confusing for staying on track at this point. I mean, what is even staying on track, bro? <laughs> what, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish I oh, had. Oh, Ganesha a... is your sacrum. So you're you're talking about the occult anatomy of man, pretty much. I don't know if you've read that by yep. Manly P. Hall. I haven't. So he relates. But, I, but yes, there is some sort of there is a absolute connection to all the liquids in our body, all the you know all the fluids, all the bones, the parts of our brain, chakras, however you want to look at it, muscles. They're all coming back to these titles, names, these big buzzwords that you get with the new age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I recently learned that the the alignment of the chakras through tantric yoga in whichever way is a way of this gets a little bit into something else into polar solar worship which which we talked about in that episode the christmas episode that we did and mm. the idea of lining up the ch seven chakras lines when you write the micro when you illuminate the micro you're kind of reflecting and em emulating the macro which is the seven stars of also major mm -hmm. or minor, you know, cause they, they all, it all points to the North and how a lot of ancient religions and secret societies always have the North, the, the white walkers are coming from the North and the game of Thrones, right? There, it's always about the North, <laughs> yeah. the North, right? The King of the North, Jon Snow, whatever his name was. And yeah, I, rec I recently learned that it was when you unlock the Kundalini and the whole serpent and all that stuff. It's all about, the emulation of these seven stars in mm -hmm. the sky. And I, I believe that there are a hundred percent altered states of consciousness. Now, have you ever done DMT? Hold on. Hold on. I have to hit the button first. Hold on. Have you ever done dimethyl trip to me? Have you ever done DMT? <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, but I've done mushrooms a bunch of times, but never DMT or ayahuasca. Yeah, I haven't done DMT, but I have done psych, uh, mushrooms, psilocybin. And the mm -hmm. idea that when you're on that, you're able to see things that you wouldn't otherwise see, that's always fascinated me. But one of the things... It, that they, it increases this bandwidth that yes. I was talking about before. Like, it, yeah, it, it widens just, it. It slightly opens it. Exactly. And it, your mechanism for shock, like what's preventing the shock, I guess that would be like the amygdala, is just like a little more tamed by you just deciding to choose to take the the thing you know it's it requires you to put in some effort uh the mushroom doesn't just come out of the ground and enter your mouth like there's an action there's a choice there's you deciding to do this wait, especially wait, 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 if we're looking can, at it that's a really mind-blowing concept can you start from the biggest so almost like <laughs> the experience itself is a sentient organic thing is that what you're trying to get at or is it, or am i looking into it wrong Yes. And that's just one part of this, you know, like you have to, we have to remember that consciousness is stored in every user of the thing. So if, if we look at the difference between LSD and mushrooms, mushrooms, the, the time that you're taking them right now, you're leaving off on all the experiences that came before that. It is holding and storing the consciousness of every user before you. LSD, on the other hand, was what, like 1971, 1968? Like how this stuff is brand new and it's synthesized in a laboratory. So the experiences that you're getting are way more synthetic. The edges aren't as, uh, the edges aren't as smooth. It's much more sharp. It's much more visceral and, 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 and difficult. It could be much more shocking whilst mushrooms kind of eases you in, but then we have to get into the different strains of mushroom. You know, it, it, it's obviously not a black and white subject. It's a deep subject, but yes, if you make a choice to do something, that's the intent. And if you go into it with the idea that you're going to become enlightened, that's the ego talking. And then you're going to have a shitty weird trip because of that. If you go into it to have fun and to just play like a child, you're going to have a much more playful childlike experience. If you go into it to do some dark work, to like work through some shit that you have going on, then you'll go into it with that intent. Therefore, it will create that effect in you. If you go into mushrooms with fear, which is what 99% of people end up doing, 
that's why you have that that experience with it you know it could take you into some portals some dark places that are timeless because ultimately the one thing that scares the shit out of humans the most is death or time but those are both they live in the same mansion because death is the end of your time so that's why having the when you become fearless of death you tend to become fearless of everything a lot of other things cuz you're like well what does it matter I'm just going to do whatever i and i you hear people who are uh, end stage whatever cancer uh terminal illnesses they're taking these mushrooms and it's just they get to live out their their last days with so much more bliss and it becomes a much more you know playful experience for them not so much doom and gloom but that's their intent, bro. They know their life is over, so they don't have to worry. If you take somebody who's going into it and they're trying to become this enlightened, wise swami, that's the ego, right? And then they're going to go into it with this egoic kind of energy, and then they're going to leave with it with this kind of like inflated. So yeah, man, the intent of it's magic, right? It's all it's all magic. People need to be cautious when they're getting into these things because if you're not ready to work with the energy mm -hmm. or you're not pure in the process you're going to create you know you're going to it, it's just like the energy of it all one last thing and this is for people that could look this up i'm not just making this shit up off, the off out of nowhere <laughs> there's a study from uh i think his name was like yamamoto or something japanese scientist who was like putting tape on the outside of glasses of water and then writing words on it yeah and if you write love, it was creating a crystalline, like a crystallized structure that was totally different than if you wrote like a I heard that was bullshit wrote, though. Like, is it? Well, I've heard of um, that test has been redone by people in other cultures, like in, in not other cultures, sorry, in like other laboratories around the world. And it has been recreated. Okay. Yeah. Because I heard it was but, bullshit because it hasn't this, been recreated. Okay. Yeah. So I actually have heard that it's been um, recreated. And mm. I, I, again... I'm kind of just going off of this from the basis of magic and like, you know, holy water. There's a, what's the difference between regular water and holy water? Well, it's if these sigil magic fucking magicians called priests and stuff are doing it. Well, there's a reason they're doing it because they they are being brainwashed through their lineage of priests and warlocks and wizards. But let, let's let's get into that subject waters, because as, as we navigate this thing that we call reality that we can perceive at least the the idea the concept of magic now you can put a k at it on it or not it's up to you fuck crowley i'm gonna say that right now but the this i i like the al kindy have you heard of al kindy al kindy no so al kindy he was this polymath of I think it was the ninth I want to say ninth century I could be wrong on that I'll look it up here in a second mm -hmm. but point being that he had Al Kindi's theory of stellar rays which is one of his many philosophies so he was I've talked about about him before Al Kindi so is it ninth century yeah so uh, 801 to 873 and that he was a Muslim philosopher polymath mathematician. And he's the father of, and this pisses people off when I say things like this, Arab philosophy. I, I called them, I think it was Jabir bin Ayan. I, I called them the, the the Paracelsus of the Arabs. And so a bunch of people got pissed <laughs> off. About that. But the, he's got this idea that, that oh, everything is a ray of light. It, we all emanate rays of light. Yep. And, and I really love this concept because the magician so my rays of light that are that i'm putting out we know we all have an aura right that when, when people walk into the room you mm -hmm. feel the air changes well my light interacting with your light interacting with this light here interacting with the screen it's an alchemical process and the light interacting is what we're perceiving as reality pretty much and what's creating our realities at this moment now the magician is the one that can manipulate those rays of light. And this gets into mm -hmm. this whole something, this concept that John D called catroptics, where you're able to turn your soul into a mirror and you're able to harness because the, the, the stars are also putting out light. 
and everything is putting out light and you're able to turn your soul into a mirror to where you're able to reflect these lights and focus them in on talismans or other people, et cetera, et cetera. And I believe those are, those are the people who can like Kabbalah, where you're able to kind of sort of bend reality to your will, right? Through maybe not supernatural means how we've been shown on TV, like the Cinemagicians with Harry Potter or Elder Scrolls or whatever other thing that they've shown us that magic is. I think it's a, it, it works. I'm not an occultist, so I don't know exactly how it works. I've only read about this sort of thing. But the way that you're able to sort of bend reality to your will and aid it in your in your endeavors. And that's why I want to get I want to get into I want to talk about this and then get into gematria because I think that's that mathematics is at the core mm-hmm. of this. And by these elites using mathematics in a certain type of way, they're able to hack the matrix and able to hack the system. But what are your thoughts on the topic of magic? Is it a mental thing? How the hermetic principles say, or is it an actual shifting of reality? Like you're able to open up a portal here somewhere. You're able to walk through it or little green men are able to walk through it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. bro? Well, I think it's both. I think you can actually look at it from like the Harry Potter kind of like, you know, what we're shown magic to be perspective, but that is a very high level and it's probably only possible by this bloodline that we were talking about earlier, this human, human sized Nephilim hermaphroditic, um, you know, something that isn't bound to one specific gender, one um, anyhow, anyway, so I think those are probably the beings that could do that type of magic, the Harry Potter type floating and flying on broomstick shit. They can probably do this. Um, but as for, um, oh, and also the face shifting from one to the next, you know, that, that is most likely a, a thing. But as for us, we have a more divine magic and it comes back to like what you were saying before we have the ability to do it all without magic wands and full moons and crystals. Um, and w- one of the number one thing rituals that we can do, which I do not think this hermaphroditic uh, being can do, is make babies. We can make the sex ritual and you don't have to be intelligent, enlightened, or have any awareness. You could be like hillbillies in the middle of the, you know, bump fuck pencil tucky. And just by the strike of luck, you can make children like you could literally create a bit a person okay so that is a very divine magic and that's something i do not think these these hermaphroditic uh beings these these human sized nephilim can do i do not think they could do this um they can create more of them but they're limited and i think that they start to have really bad like a really difficult time with their um birth rate and with uh, a lot of failed births. Uh, I think this is why we see that the cloning concept or the consciousness transferring concept makes a lot of sense and why the types of beings that we see that are in pol- like the p- big political roles, they don't even look like their faces are real. It looks like they're all wearing masks. Uh, we see a lot of the push and agenda at one time of things like plastic surgery. We could also see their bodies are starting to look way more extreme than ever. Um, Yo, all of that. But what about Pelosi it's- and those milkers, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> I just had to throw in there. She's got some nice ones. Dude. Yeah, like when you look at her face, it looks like it's not real skin. Like these people don't look like there. There's something about them that is off. Um, you know the the royalty for sure. You get this essence. I I actually saw this one video. I forgot where I found it, but. It was that like Meghan Markle or whatever her her name is, uh, and Harry, Harry the. Yeah, I, saw, I know these, which video you're talking they, about. They were at, I don't know, they were watching some sort of concert, and there was just a regular person who zoomed in on her and like took a video, and she was robotic. Like her eyes didn't blink in a normal cadence. She was just kind of like a robot, like a literal, uh, 
remote controlled being. I, I do think the MK Ultra is a big part of this, but that's kind of a no, no, it wasn't this. No, it but you, it was but literally at like a live event. This is part of it, though. They they let you see what you saw, and then they'll do stuff like this, like creepy, Mar uh, and Megan Markle masks. So it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, it was just it was just a mask. It wasn't anything. Right. You know, what I'm saying to discredit what you're. It's like what they're doing. They do the same thing with Adrenochrome. Like they'll go on like Jimmy Fallon or whatever, and they'll be like, and then these conspiracy theorists think they're drinking blood, and it's just like they make it into a joke. You're right. They do it like that because that's part of the insecurity. Oh, this is it, dude. I saw, I think it was something like, um, similar to this. Yeah. How creepy. But, but you have to, <laughs> but you have to ask yourself how many times could that have slipped up, yeah. uh, with one of the presidents, with, uh, people who, who we see all the time. I mean, we've seen Kanye looking like that before mm -hmm. we've seen, Trump looking like that before, like that it happens, it slips. And um, I just think that that's a really um, compelling part. So what's going on here, the optics, you know, just kind of making us believe that these entities are real people with a, with a soul. And I've uh, come to a place through my study where I don't even think they could bear children. Uh, I think all of them have to go through some sort of, uh, yeah, some sort of impregnation through through the through the sciences through 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 alchemy probably the womb works but then there needs to be a cesarean they're not able to have vaginal births like a woman um yeah kind of like a side theory but getting back to the magic and the magic that we can do um that's the number one magic ritual that we could all do and that's why when you go to the story of adam and eve and people might be confused now like why is he talking about this well the story of adam and eve goes back to the sex ritual it's eating the forbidden fruit. This is this is an orgasm. The the, mm -hmm. the forbidden fruit has always been turned into an apple, right? Well, the red apple or Apollo is the root chakra. It is not Apollo in the sky. It is apple low, low as above, so below. The the root chakra. So she tempts Adam or Atum. Adam, what all matter is comprised of. And she tempts him into a sex ritual where he has the feeling of pleasure through the orgasm. They have the feeling of pleasure through that sex ritual, through the orgasm, and then they create eternal life. They know as God knows, feel as God feels, and they have access to what God does, which is creation. That's all a God technically is, right? The creator. So the, this is all told to you in Genesis. It's all just the sex ritual. And that's why everything that was plagiarized before it was much more in tune with parts of the body, the chakras, the energies, you know, talking about the Kundalini, all of this stuff. And then as we got closer and closer to Christianity, a lot of that stuff was hidden and, and spoken of still, but in parable. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even the, even the, even the Christ dying at 33, resurrected three <laughs> days later, that's 33 spine, you know, vertebrae in the spine. You have the sacrum, the claustrum, Santa claustrum, Santa Claus. Again, it's all just talking about this cerebral spinal fluid. That's the whole 33. It has nothing to do with Freemasonry. It's not evil. It's not satanic. It's also not Jesus. <laughs> it's a thing your body does. It's always coming back to the body. It's all alchemical language because I think that 100% all these guys are alchemists. And you mentioned the child, the childbirth, right? And these guys were trying to quite literally do what we're talking about, trying to hack this reality, trying to hack the matrix, trying to somehow exploit the occulted nature of reality, of human yeah, human nature as well. And the birth, they were like, hey, if a human body can make life and can have a baby, how you said, in the middle of anywhere. Uh, yeah. No, no trying, no intent, no real no. intellect, just because you want to fuck. Yeah. Yeah. What else can it do? And that's when you had a whole yep. bunch of, you know what I'm saying? Like they were like, let's crank this up to 10. And they started to do all this, 100%. all this other crazy stuff. 
and and that's how we have i believe i I love the idea of the magnum opus where when when that reaction happens bro that this idea of it being the transference of a base metal into gold that when that happens the light that occurs from that reaction scrambles your dna Mm -hmm. and kind of and Jay Widener calls it the homo luminous where you turn into this light being this uh, maybe light body. Not, light body ascended master whatever it may be however it may yeah it may or Horus Horus yes daylight so you literally become the daylight and the daylight is only where you are by the way think about this because when it's sunny here it could be dark somewhere else when it's a winter time in Australia, it's summertime. Where, so what you you become literally the sun, mm-hmm. not a sun. Mm-hmm. Right now you're a sun. You're a son of something, and you're working with their DNA, correct? You're working with their salts. Then you go through this process that you just explained, and you literally become the light. You become the Christ, the Corona, the Corona around Helios, the sun. You become the sun. And this has nothing to do with being melanated or any of that matrix level bullshit, that that nonsense about race. We're talking about alchemical within. And it's always as above, so below, as within, so without. So I just want people to know, like there's no, based on just the color that you were born or the sex you were born or any of that, if you think there's superiority in any of this shit, you're very, very deeply asleep. Because I know there's full-blown communities that are dedicated to thinking that people of color or aborigine are somehow like more superior because their skin is melanated and it, it could feed off this. None of that matters. You have a you have a soul within you, soul, sun, right? Soul is within, in the darkness. Inside of your body is a chamber of darkness. And that's where the sun is. It emits. And when you go through this process you explained... This sun cracks everything open and the whole structure starts to be anew again. It is the phoenix rising from the ashes, right? The four stages. And I guess if we're talking about alchemy, there's a there's a reason for for this being basic. You know, it's actually not that fucking complex. If anything, there's been a corruption of the alchemical teachings to the masses. And that's probably due to the new age and things like the esophical society, etc. But anyways, could I'm sure you have some something to add. Yeah, you're pissing off a lot of people. <laughs> I know. Good. That's needed. Pissing off a lot of Show people. Show up to my live stream on Saturday, and I think you'll be even more offended, and I get more prana. So, wow. Okay. And, yeah, no, and I believe, and I think that's part of the matrix, too. And that's why I always say I don't pretend to to know anything, right? And we reserve the right to change our mind. And that's that's some people's reality, which is cool. As long as you leave the, the children out of it. And, and But then it gets dogmatic and then they start pushing things on other people. But yeah, I think that we are all able to one at one point or another achieve this. And I don't want to say like God's state. Do you believe that we become... You're being so cautious right now. I could like feel it. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Because I'm trying to find the right words to to describe it. But are you? Because you, you know, we always hear, "Oh, you become your own god. You are your own god." Right? The the the, the divine spark. Once you, uh, you know, you because you, the church is a brokered experience, right? It's you can achieve divinity through us. And then the Gnostics are like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. You can achieve divinity by yourself. And they're like, wait, what? They killed them. Like, no, you can't be saying that because you're, yep. you're fucking up our business model. Yep, precisely. If you're if you're healthy, then you don't need to go to the hospital. Yeah. And that business model fails. <laughs> so do you think you're able if to you're achieve? If you're spiritually healthy, then you don't need to go to the church hospital. See, what people need to learn is a church is a bank. Mm-hmm. It worships the god of Mammon, which is Mercury, which is the Caduceus, which is a hermaphroditic symbol under the god of Jupiter, the the father of Mercury. 
Jupiter being the god of this age, Jupiter, we're in the age of Pisces. That's why Jesus gets all this fish symbolism. Yeah, and he's yeah, he divides So he, the church isn't the the church doesn't do well if you don't want to go. <laughs> Cuz banks only prosper if you open loans. And not only that, bro, they need but to it, sell you the money. If you think about the idea that the, the concept that they they have their own pools which they can tap into of energy, right? They have their own followings of people that they can tap into not only for monetary monetary gain which they can also do that but also that loose energy right by keeping yes, them that's in that. the most important thing mm -hmm. exactly Precisely. and that we're not, same loose by the way guys like we're not we're not talking about just money we're talking about like prana like life force mm -hmm. energy like that's really what we're but yeah continue isn't it currency it's the current currency of the sea, right? Yeah. So and that's who Mercury is. Mercury is the prince of the power of the air. Money created out of thin air. Fiat money is not real. Which it's they just do. Belief. Yeah. Which they do. Yeah. And we still all have to abide by it. Mm -hmm. So it's the same energy that you're getting with church. It's the same energy that you're getting with the belief that you'll be healed through the hospital. This is all the same parasite. This is all the same cult, and it has the same symbols. Your World Economic Forum, United Nations, your hospitals, World Health Organization, etc. It all uses the same symbols. Your church uses the same symbols. Your priests and pastors and popes and cardinals and bishops all have the same symbols. They all wear the same colors. They all wear the same fucking fish hats. It's all Jupiterian. And this is why people need to wake up to the, 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 the truthers that think Satan is Saturn. You don't know what you're talking about. Saturn is for Aquarius, which will get us out of this paperwork privilege bullshit that we're dealing with in this age, which comes back to the oak tree, which is a symbol of Jupiter. Okay? People need to learn their symbols. Satan is not Saturn. Saturn is a sovereign land-based law, unlike Admiralty Commerce Law, which is the bullshit we're under now. That's Jupiterian. I've always said Satan is Saturn. And <laughs> but it's not. That's it why, is not that's why i have professionals no. like you on bro yeah so the idea of a, of a of a satan is a thing that has no desire for you to be sovereign that which is different from a lucifer mm -hmm. it's a yes it's seth it it's set if you if you want to look at set or seth as a thing in the greco-roman it will just be jupiter or zeus the one who overthrows his father this is a, a mythological story that gets conf it gets confusing for people because it's all lost in this word salad of you know the etymology. You you got to break it down and connect it to Egypt, and then you'll it'll start to make a lot more sense. But anyways, just to quickly sum it up, the god of this age of Pisces is Jupiter. We know that we're in Pisces, even if you guys want to believe in your religions with Christianity, because we have the Jesus fish, we have all that symbolism. He's the fisher of man. He has can feed people with the fit, whatever. It's all the same fish stories. He says, I'll be with you until the age. And then he talks about the man bearing a pitcher of water, which is Aquarius. It's all astro theological, anthropomorphized zodiac astrology, link, link, uh, jibber jabber. That gets mixed up in parable and it makes it confusing for people to decipher unless they know about the mythology. When you learn about the mythology, you'll see that the Jesus character is Theus, uh, Theseus. It is not Jesus. And anything that has Isus or Isis or Isis is literally Isis. It is part of that divine. It's a corrupted Holy Trinity, by the way. It's a corrupted Holy Trinity. It's not the real one. Because we shouldn't have Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's three men. You can't make babies with three men. <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's an awkward threesome. Yeah, it is father, mother, ch child. That is that is always it, and that's in Egypt. You get that, but over time, as this Greco-Roman parasite took over the world, Julius Caesar is Jesus Christ, playing himself in a book, putting himself into a book to control people and brainwash them in the age of Pisces. So what's important about this is they've corrupted all of this shit and then made it sound virtuous. Now people feel good about themselves when they say Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Mm. But you're talking out of an... It's not even the, the organic system. There's nothing biologically organic about this. 
And they fuck up with the symbols a lot too because they'll show the Holy Spirit as a dove. That dove is Semiramis. That dove is Columbia. It's the Statue of Liberty as we know it. It is going back to Lucifer, who's Eosphorus or Phosphorus or Venus. That's the light bearer. That's why she holds the torch. So, you know, you really start to compile all this together and it 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 becomes very clear that Jupiter in this New Testament, the Jupiter age that we're in, that's all of the New Testament, has to deal with Satan. And one final thing to mention, if you go back into Pompeii or Herculaneum, uh, these parts of South Italy, you'll see that in their ruins, they show you Jupiter, and he has the body of a serpent. Hmm. Like a Yaldabaoth type and, of thing? Like a Demiurge type of thing? Exactly. He has wings and he also wears a crown because that's what he is. He's the king of the gods mm. and he has a serpent's body and he molests his own children. All the things that these elites do, the, the organ harvesting, cannibalism, uh, having sex with your own uh with your own children, pedophilia, having sex with animals, which is a thing that's portrayed in Greek pottery, shown to you yeah. all over the place. Mm -hmm. Pedophilia was totally acceptable in yeah. Greek culture back then. It was and a, again, it if was you're Greek or you're... A sign of status, too. Correct. And I, I don't want to offend people if you're Greek or you're born into this nationality, you live there, whatever. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the origins of this whole system that we call society and money and law, etc. Because it's all systemic of that culture. All the math that you do you know, we were going to get into Gematria. Well, all the maths that we have, language, all of it, it stems from them, from that culture, that they gave us that stuff. And they left it for us in paperwork. And that's huge when we talk about Jupiter. This world we live in today, you know, if you don't have the paperwork, you're not going to be able to travel. That's called a passport. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the paperwork of the social security number, the tax identification number, or the birth certificate, you're not going to be able to get a driver's license, which makes it so that you can't drive, which makes it so you might not be able to get a job, which makes it so you can't get a bank account. So we live in the age of paperwork as the main enslavement system in Admiralty Maritime Commerce Law, again, all tied to Jupiter, not Saturn. And perhaps they did that to occult the the true guy or thing right to take people's sight away from that one guy that we've been focused on all of history and just right hide the real guy over there <laughs> right and make mm -hmm. and, and and have him be occulted from the from the limelight but one of the things that you're talking about etymology words grammar we know grammar comes from grimoire etc cetera, etc cetera, all that stuff i actually heard you say that for the first time and i i appreciate you for saying that yeah it comes from grammar, the grammar connection to grimoire mm -hmm. i've never heard any other person on youtube say that so that that was dope well, you're welcome bro that's what we're here for we're here to to drop these nuggets of of truth and <laughs> and wisdom and but the that Three idea times. that when we speak right abracadabra as i speak i create or something along those lines mm -hmm. yep, yep. and when you're spelling you're casting spells and be careful what you wish for and all these things well i i and it also to link it back to this matrix that we're in i keep using the word matrix so i'm going to find another word for it but this thing that we're in how these gods and these beings of antiquity are in our own language. They hide in my, my friend Gabe puts it, slick dissident, shout out. They hide in our language. What day is it today? Today's Tuesday. Well, I don't know which which God that is, but for example, Thursday, Thor's Day, or, or, or Friday, Freya Day. You know what I'm saying? Like all these you know, you you know the days because you you're you said you're half Puerto Rican, right? Or you're Puerto Rican, so you yeah. know Spanish. So what is what is Tuesday? Mars Day. Spanish. Yeah. Mars day. Right? Marte, so Mars. And Wednesday is Miércoles, so yeah. Mercury. Oh, okay. Oh, Thursday, shit. Thursday, Jueves, Jupiter, Damn. Friday, Viernes, Venus, Sábado, Saturn, Domingo, the day of the sun, the day of dominion. 
And then the moon day, Monday, it all starts lunis. It all starts lunis. again. So exactly. It's the aura, bro. It's the That's journey. The Damn, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's sit. So let's Latin, sit with that for Latin a is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. That was dope. Yeah, Latin is Latin is helpful. Um, and I do the same thing all the time. Like when you start getting into these word spells, and then uh, the prefixes, suffixes, going back to Greek and and Rome and Latin origins, as well as the connection to your body actually knowing like which planets are your fingers like each is dedicated to the finger we we typically see the association with the chakras in these planets etc and nobody could tell me that the greek and roman mythology is, is horse shit because the indoctrination of well let's just look at nasa they're naming these planets after these fucking greek and roman deities mm -hmm. are they doing that just because they they're having fun with us no they're doing this because this is the way it is did this I is send all you... part of like the did I send you? No, I don't think I did. I did an episode recently. Speaking of celestial bodies, I know some people think that they're holographic projections, whatever, more power to you. But yeah, I, I did this episode because you're, 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 t you're touching on a subject that I've, I believe ties into alchemy. I believe ties into this reality that we were experiencing and the way that the elite experience it. And I think that immortality is a real thing, but not the way we've been taught. And if you notice how you're saying, by giving, by us powering that egregore, that Dyson sphere, that whatever thing, at the, the, this, this endless motion machine that will forever be powered by, we don't know what are these thought experiments, by us mm -hmm. forever venerating these gods of antiquity. Because some people still worship them. So these are some people's gods even till today. By them yeah. being put in the well, We all worship Friday. Right? When we, we say, love that God, shit. like, thank God it's Friday, or like, you know, <laughs> we love that we shit. We don't even know we're doing it, but we're doing it. Exactly. But By yeah, us continue. powering that egregore, or that thought form, or that topo, whatever it may be, we are keeping them alive. We're keeping them alive in our language. And for a very long time, right? They're going to forever because we're always going to use language. But have you noticed that the craters on the moon, a lot of. Minds of antiquity have names on the craters of the moon. And I think that's part of the alchemical process. They all have these busts and these, these statues attributed to them. Well, if we look at the ancient Egyptians and how they would destroy statues, you know, chop their noses off, chop their arms off. Some people say, oh, it's because, you know, they didn't want to show that they were black. Some other people say, it was like, oh, well, they were doing. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the idea that they were wanting to suffocate that statue because yep. they believe that that entity that that deity was in that statue and if you look at the opening of the mouth ritual of the funerary processes of the egyptians they would quite literally reanimate the dead they would invoke these entities and these spirits into these statues so the, to these people these statues were real now if that's an actual thing or not, I don't know. But they were, the Bible says, you know, be careful of idols that need to be carried. This is what it was talking about. It was talking about these, like, Baphomet, right, on the subject of Saturn and Kronos and yep. uh, the talking head, the head that would prophesy to the Knights Templar. And it's how you're saying, we're in the age of paperwork and all these things. Well, what did the Knights Templar create? The Chet, the Chet system, right? This, this, I think that's the name of it, the Chet, where it's like the card, you present the card. And then they figured out like, hey, wait a minute. We can actually leverage this money that people are giving. Nobody's checking to see how much money they have. Let's go ahead and loan it out on and charge interest for it. And as long as we don't have everybody check all their money out at the same time, we can keep this scam going and make money off of other people's money. And boom, yep. the modern day banking system was created. That is the primal. Yeah, that is the primal focus or the primary, excuse me, the primary focus of this age. It's what you're talking about, creating a fiat money system, money out of thin air. And yep. you're talking about in your last video, everybody's dude, I, I used to I've been, bro, I've been a bunch of money on, on crypto, Ethereum. I had a bunch of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. OK, I had a bunch of Ethereum. I made a bunch of money. I lost a bunch of money. So I can show you the screenshots of both the money I made and the money I lost. And it was addicting, but I learned T. I was doing all that. I had, I have five screens. I had two at all times with the charts, stock market mm -hmm. during the day, crypto market on the weekends, right? Cause it always runs on the weekends. Right? So I was making a whole bunch of money for, I, I stopped podcasting for like seven months and I was just focusing on 
on TA. I was teaching people TA. I was doing all that stuff. And then obviously started to come down. I still have some Cardano. I still have a couple of Ethereum. And now it's it's mm-hmm. popping a little bit again. But this idea of being addicted to that, being addicted yeah. and, and being addicted to the, it's the alchemical process, making something out of nothing, but not quite nothing. Yep. You still need to have something, but you want to multiply it. And you just sit here mm-hmm. in front of our scrying mirrors and we're addicted to watching the charts. We're addicted to looking at everything. And you're addicted to the stimulus that it gives to you. Like it's like it's cheap dopamine. Yep. I get it. I talk about this so often because I think it's a thing that we all need to admit to. And once we get admit, that's a big part of the enlightenment process. I call it the great admission. It's just to be vulnerable and to say like, okay, I'm addicted to looking at these charts. I'm addicted to the emotion. I have an emotional uh, tie to this market, even though this market doesn't give a shit about my emotions. So you just have to admit it. It's like getting off of any drug. And once you can do that, and once you can be strong and you know reassess, build a better plan and have this play rather than the game playing you, you play the game. Um, yeah, you take back control of it all and it starts to become harmonious again. But I think the way that crypto and all speculative assets are sold onto people is in a typical fashion of how religion is sold onto people or how gurus are sold onto people. It's that this person or this, we'll talk crypto, this coin or this asset class will make you rich or you will make money. It starts off sounding good, right? You're a sati- you're sal- little bit sal- saliva growing in your, you're like, yeah, you're getting- The nips start to get hard. They yeah, start all to- Yeah, of your nipples start to get erect. <laughs> yeah, and then when, <laughs> and- <laughs> And then you're only told about the good. You research only for the good. You will bypass anything. that. Or on the other side, if you learn about one particular crypto or one particular company, and that company has been able to thrive by talking shit about another company, <laughs> you know, we have this whole Apple Samsung thing or Bitcoin Ethereum or the XRP army who doesn't like the other. And all of this, it's all cult-like behavior. And because I studied cults, uh, for over a decade before I even got into finances and I got into really being a decoder, I had all the machinations and foundations of protection so that whatever moves I make in the future, I'm not getting caught up in that cult like worship system where I'm giving it all my prana and now it's just I'm enslaved to it. I didn't want to be that person that was staring at charts for 16 fucking hours straight with I, I can't influence them. So I believe that Dude, this what we're talking about right now is essential. It's a core part of like my philosophy and what I always practice. Creation is everything. So my main mechanism to jump out of this trap is to go play guitar, go make music, go decode, go work on something. Like I just keep myself busy with my own essence that I already have within me. And I try to not just be hypnotized by whatever's going on outside of me. And that I very much felt that when I got into crypto, what you just exposed, I went through it too, brother. I where we've all been there. Yeah. It's, um, it's people that addictive. get into research do it too. <laughs> yeah. Research is very addicting where it takes over you, consumes you. I, yep. I think I heard you talking about that uh, one time as well. And I appreciate, I think, dude, those are the conversations that we all need to have. Those are so much more valuable than just the the mental masturbation of whatever information we find because we have more than enough information already now let's learn how to utilize it let's learn how to be balanced with it let's learn how to be empowered by it let's learn how to make it our bitch instead of the other way around take all of these symbols and invert them have it be powered have use it back at them use it back at these so-called elites all of this stuff like this awareness should set you free. It should empower you. It should not make you depressed. It should not make you anxious. And it should not make you addicted to cheap dopamine. That's not what it's here for, guys. That's not alchemy. That's not you being the magician. That's you just being walking from one system of control and stepping right into a new one. And guess who took the steps? You. Yeah. Bill Gates didn't push you to it. The Pope didn't push you to it. You can make fun of Klaus Schwab all day. But you were the one who decided to take on this addiction to the cheap dopamine. And I know a lot of us really struggle with breaking free from it. But when I started focusing my work on talking about this, specifically in my live streams, that was the biggest breakthrough 
I was getting with not only myself by just being able to exercise, being vulnerable and talking about how I've been here, I've done it, but also getting to talk about my audience. It's really allowed us to feel so much more comfortable and then it gives us back our energy because now we could focus towards creation, to focus on making shit, taking action, creating businesses, you know, just transmutation, bro. Mm. Like and you want to take all this beautiful uh, just and convert it into something. And I appreciate you too, because I was listening to your show the other day and you were like, you don't need to learn more stuff today. And here I am like, yeah, dude, but I, I got to get this episode out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm listening to you, I'm like, but water's above. I'm on, I'm in the middle of research for an episode. I promise you that when I'm done, I'm going to stop. Right. And you and the, from that episode, I always keep that in my mind. Like, I don't need to read another book today. But how you're saying it's so addictive. And really, I mean, well, no, bro. What I what I I think that you researching where you're thirsty for it, where it's like it's fulfilling you. It's it's your purpose then. So please, I want everyone to know, like, I'm not saying that anybody's failing by going deep into the trenches with their with their work or study or research or what they're passionate about. I think it's a beautiful thing that you're inclined to get involved in something. All I'm saying is that see where it creates an Im uh, imbalance. Don't in let it life. overcome you is what you're getting at. Yeah. Uh, my last thing I'll say is uh, coming back to the crypto thing and the chart staring is I have people that are like a father of three with a wife. And they're fucking on the verge of divorce. Their kids barely have any connection with them because they're sitting there day tr like looking at the crypto market because this is 24 7, 365 and never pauses. And these people that are addicted to it worse than the heroin needle, they're just staring at this chart like their eyes are fucking part of the screen. Okay. And, We're always and they're there. sitting there two o'clock in the family, morning. Their family, yeah. And their family unit is dissolving. So anyone wants to study why the society is going to shit, it's because the family unit is being dismantled by women being in their masculine and men being effeminate fucking losers, basically. Get your power back, guys. Okay? You have a beautiful woman next to you. Be with her. Like, there's a time for crypto. There's a time for charts. There's a time for researching. There's a time for reading Aleister Crowley's fucking porno <laughs> mags or whatever he wrote. <laughs> But you have children, dog. Yeah. Like, and this is what I've been trying to speak to people. I'm like, if you want to win the game, and if there is a game, and you want to become empowered and, and not get in full blown control of these so called elites, you you're squandering a mm -hmm. beautiful thing that you have. And I see what it turns people into. It's not just crypto. It's not just research. It's so many things. It requires a real ascended be like being like a real master to 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 identify their imbalances. Yeah, I was there, dude. Uh, at two, three o'clock in the morning. I was also I leverage traded for a long time, right? And yeah. right, the good trades were awesome, and those bad trades were <laughs> rough. You know what I mean? Like when yeah. when it was really moving, but and I and I learned to overcome. I learned to step away and not care about it right when i was like all right i'm gonna sell off a majority of it and just chill because that's the thing you're always hungry for more right you always want more you want more you can't take that that win you got to take a few wins in that day and then when you, you need you, a bigger win you need a bigger win right yeah you it's like heroin more. yeah bigger. dude 100 bro need i've been a, there uh, but you know what's amazing if you look at this from a magical perspective or like that egregore perspective like bro bitcoin has the most prana like, right, biggest market cap. We could just call that the most prana. Now, the Federal Reserve, dude, talk about it, God. They just print their own shit. <laughs> they don't ask for permission. Yeah. They don't wait for a government to pass a bill. They just show up at the printing press. And now we have computers. So they could just, a keystroke can make a trillion dollars. There is, where when we get into, that could be another, like a future podcast we do. Like just the alchem the alchemy of money. I don't even know what to call it, you know? But that would be a dope conversation to have because I want people to listen very closely to what I'm about to say. When you break that addiction to the god of mammon, which is the the worship of money, which is totally different than just ex ex accepting that money is a part of reality. It's a part of this matrix and you need to play that game in order to be here. There's a big difference between the worship of it and the realization that it's here, right? So you you have an easier or better chance of survival in this matrix if you have one foot in it and one foot out of it you don't just completely disregard it because then you're going to be broke as fuck and struggling you need to play the game you need to be aware of the rules of the game 
don't be a hater while you're playing the game. Just learn whenever you make mistakes. But I'll say right now, if you're anyone in this, if you're a market participant, whether that's crypto, precious metals, Forex, or, or, or stocks, and you sell your entire portfolio someday, that is literally like you um, taking the biggest shit of your life. Like it is the most relieving. <laughs> like, have you ever needed to just piss? You know how like if you need a piss and you're driving home and you have yeah. 30 minutes to go and you're just like building in, like you, everything becomes irrelevant and muted. And the only thing that matters is the fact that you need to get home to take a piss. Mm -hmm. Your body enslaves you all the time. We, yeah. we rarely notice it. And then you do that. You take that piss. Dude, you're literally re you're relieving yourself, but you're also bringing back life force to you mm -hmm. to focus your calories on other areas, you know? But when you have to pee, you'll fucking run past Jesus Christ if he was standing Move, next bitch. to you just to get to a toilet. <laughs> exactly. You'd, you'd stiff arm him. Yeah. So so this is this is what's so funny about money. It's the same way, bro. When you like just let go of it all, like I don't know about you, but I used to have a record collection. I used to love vinyls. I was collecting stuff that really I, I actually enjoyed listening to. So I had this huge record collection and I noticed it was an addiction that I had. I just always wanted to find like the most rare record, like or something that I knew was like a first pressing. And I'm a musician, like that's my main passion. But I, 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 because uh, my father is a heroin addict, I grew up around addiction my whole life, like seeing it. I know what it is firsthand. Like I seriously know what it is. That's why I was able to identify this stuff with money and crypto, et cetera. But my first physiological feeling to breaking an addiction was when I sold my record collection. I literally felt my body become different. Like everything about my physical being felt like it was sh like the shackles came off. And it wasn't like records are like I could have been buying way worse shit, I suppose. But I just have to be real with everyone and transparent and real with myself that the record addict, the, the vinyl record purchasing addiction is no different than all of these other things. Just like Juan said moments ago, like wanting to win the bigger trade is just like wanting the better hit of heroin. It's it's the same. It consumes you all the same, actually. And it's not about the object or the 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 type of drug it's just your relationship with it so you know i don't know if you've you've tuned into my live streams and you've seen people in the comments section that are like dude i used to fucking smoke weed all day every day and i started tuning into these podcasts and now i've like quit and i'm like dude if you asked me two years ago that that would be the effect that i would have i would have been like you're <laughs> what the, what do you say what do you mean yeah but now I'm seeing that this kind of trans being vulnerable with people and transparent in this way, it's allowing people to realize their mode of being. And then now they could self-reflect and then they could correct course. I'm not sitting here telling you that smoking weed is bad. I'm sitting here saying that only you can determine your health, the health of the relationship you have with it. The same thing goes for your wife, your, with the relationship you have with your children, the relationship you have with your friends. If you have five close friends and four of them are just drunks who are going to strip clubs every night blowing all their money and they don't really have any core values well guess what you take on the energy of those beings you become that and if you feel like you want to advance in life well you're going to have to find four or five people that are at a higher level than yeah. you they you have to be mentored by them and then you'll graduate with them right and it's very rare you see people who are completely uh on a different frequency than the friend group they have or you could just be the hermit, go on that, go on that hermituitous path. That might be what's necessary for you right now. I know plenty of people that they have a bunch of fake friends. They have a bunch of just player characters in their life that have no value. They're just there to take up some time and some space, drinking buddies, if you will. And they're an enlightened being. And they could tell that being around these people, it's just dead weight. You know, sometimes you have to go reassess and take an inventory of the player characters in your life and cut the dead weight. If you want to grow, if you want to advance. Yeah. You're, you always get so heavy waters you make people really listening right now, man. Fuck this guy. I don't want to self reflect. Who wants to <laughs> self reflect? I'm not going to cut the baggage out, but yeah, I think that it's, it's necessary to have these conversations because we get lost in the sauce when it comes to a lot of these these theories and it's yeah it's cool it's awesome but this is a reality we're also people right i'm the same guy on this podcast and i am 
in the real world, right? I, I, I don't change. I don't do anything. But yeah, it, learn to identify your strengths, your weaknesses, what needs to be cut out and cut it out. And yeah, dude, I've, I remember I was vaping for a while. Never smoked cigarettes, but I was vaping for a while. And it took, it, it was kind of, it was hard for me to stop. It was really hard until I just, dude, I went cold turkey. I was just like, I was vaping to the point where like my chest would hurt, bro. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. And then you still hit it even while your chest is hurt. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. But it's like this thing, it's, it's automatic. And then I just cut it out, bro. hundred percent. Just like flat out. Boom. You know what I'm saying? I haven't smoked a vape and I don't know, since last year sometime. I don't remember exactly when, but yeah. That's amazing, man. Congratulations on that. Yeah, but it's it's a mental it's a mental type of thing. It's a mental fight. And I think that it's all it's all mental at the end of the day. It 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 goes back and that's the fight that we have within ourselves. And some people choose to admit it, some people don't. But me being a father really changes a lot of things when it comes to life and the way you have to live, yeah. because it's not just about me. It's not just about, I'm not just yeah. a single guy anymore. I have to provide for my family. I have to, you know what I mean? It, it's a little bit different than the regular person. When you, once you have kids, it changes. It really does. And totally. you don't know until you're actually there type of thing. Yeah. I heard, uh, I heard Jordan Peterson say that, um, when you have a child, it's the moment where you realize that you're no longer the main uh, priority in your life. You no longer are the priority. And that right there completely changes the game, you know? So I could totally, I think of course, like this is just him being basic and simple, but it's true. I could totally, I could totally see that. So they've put these things in front of us to make us become addicted, right? They present these systems, whether it be anything, food, porn, money, materialistic things, whatever it may be. They use these things to attach us, how you said, to this mundane world. And once you learn that this is part of the mundane world and, and learn to exist, coexist with it, then you're that much, you're, you're that much further ahead than the next player character if you mm -hmm. will not not npc mm -hmm. but player character and that's what yeah for anybody wondering like oh what's the point of all this that's the point to help people because there's some people who need help identifying it right like they're not going to find it on their own let's get into gematria because i know you go hard in the paint on that i'm not 100 percent well versed in that but how gematria how numbers because what i am well versed in is pythagoreanism and daddy pythagoras mm. i've studied him I've done presentations on the number symbolism of the Pythagoreans and the idea that numbers are the language of the universe. And I think that by Pythagoras saying all is number, the Pythagoreans live by that. I believe that they were hinting at some sort of matrix, if you will. Some, and there is an actual, there is an actual con a phenomenon called synesthesia where there's synesthesia, I believe it's called where people actually see number. They see number, they see colors, they see sounds. So if you go back to the idea of the matrix, the movies and the green numbers and all that stuff, some people, that's some people's realities. So by them putting mm -hmm. this in, the, in movies, they're hinting at it, be, it being real to somebody. And it's a phenomenon back to phenomenology where it's real to somebody and they don't know why it happens, but it does. And the idea that numbers are a language, perhaps to another to other entities, I don't know. I don't know if you want to go there, but can you break down the relation of reality with numbers for us? How the Pythagoreans believe so? Well, I, I haven't studied much into the Pythagorean side of things, so that's awesome that you have. Um, so maybe you could fill in after I say what I'm about to say. But to me, math is just Mother Nature expressed in symbols. Now, whether you want to consider that Mother Nature also includes the cosmos, then that's fine. As like however you want to look at it. But I would, I would actually venture to say that before we have uh, alphabet, we probably had numbers first. And it would come back to the basics of just counting your fingers or counting your toes or counting the eyes. It just would be parts. It would start with you and your, 
your body and learning your body and the relationship that your body has to something else and seeing the sequence of like how this all operates on an organic biological um, side. So uh, yeah, I would just say that math is simply mother nature expressed in symbols. And as we get more advanced in it all, then we start making our way up to like the Fibonacci sequence. And we start to see that that is literally proving what I'm talking about right now. How all things are sort of growing in these toroidal fields, these infinite fractaling, spiraling. That is the energy uh, force that pushes out and continues uh, just like our bodies do as they age. You know, they start out small seedling to this full blown, you know, at its peak and then it starts to rot and decay. Um, and then what do we call that? Like, what do we start to um, title those things as? Well, then you could even get into the mythology. You break down stages of life. Then you have age or that's where chronos or chronology or, or timekeeping comes into play. Or you could bring that back to sun worship as well, creating sundials, keeping track of stuff. I think that would have a lot more value than an alphabet because uh, we're not designed to actually write we're not really like it's not really in our best interest like we're not really good at reading or writing that's not our natural flow state our natural flow state is creating sounds and dancing or moving that would be a much more natural flow state it goes against our flow state to actually sit down write shit down and compile information in books it breaks our prana or our chi but if we dance we have sex, we talk, we laugh, we roll around, we play sports, etc. That's our natural flow state as humans and all nature. Hence why we're the only being that has got to this place where we're sitting around writing shit down and creating skyscrapers and all the other things. Like we're not even animals. We're, we're like our own type of species. So it's in the creation of maths, it would make sense that eventually it gets a language. And then when you have the two, then you get greek isopsophy or you get hebrew gematria and that's kind of the origins of that's like the story here i suppose it's been coded in back then those are much more sophisticated uh systems what we have today with english is definitely a more interesting uh conversation because that's built almost in spells and almost in creating severing of energy and having people know definitions but not know meanings having people know definitions, but not know symbols. So we go back to the Hebrew and like each letter has a numerical value as well as each letter has a meaning. You go to English and that's not the case. It's just the most plagiarized form uh, getting to something that has, it's meaningless on the micro and all we're looking at it for is its definition. And then we have it getting complex with grammar and the writing whether it be cursive or lowercase, uppercase, et cetera, like it starts getting wonky. So that was where my interest came into play. And that was how I, how I perceived it all to make sense of it. And I think the creation story that we get in all of the mythologies, as well as in the Bible, et cetera, it's playing on that similar kind of, playing in a similar thing where before we had language, we had numbers, we had observation, we had numbers one through nine, and then we started to develop language later. So I guess to answer this, gematria numerology is very advanced. It would only be something of a, a, of a highly advanced mind that would want to start creating all of this specifically to hide secrets within the words and hide these alphanumerical phrases because the public is only being taught definitions, the public is the the collective is only being taught the the words from a perspective of their outcome, not really on their origin. I love that, dude. No, knowing definitions but not knowing the meanings. So you know what it means, but you don't know what it means. I'm trying to yep. find the timestamp, but you said that that's gonna be a clip. That that shit went hard, bro. So the yeah, as you as you work with English specifically, um, it's amazing. Like it's OK, bro, real quick. So J is not used in it's not really used in Latin. So Jupiter is not Jupiter. It's Lupiter. What does that sound like? Lucifer. Mm. Remember before we were talking about this? It's just amazing. Like when you go take some of these basics and what is a J? 
you know, a J and an L almost look identical. We just have a little curve. Yeah, it was just a stroke of the pen. I mean, the, the, I've, I've always talked about it that the the original alphabet. Sigil magic. There you go. There's these numbers and uh, the, these these symbols. And in in, I think I had, it was a comment on one of my recent videos, something where they were like, they've always made us hate math because they understood this. I might have been looking at something. They've always made us hate math because me, for example, I've always been bad at math. They've always told us. I look at math at, on a different, in a different way. Me to me, math and theorems, and this is from studying the Pythagoreans, is a way to manifestation, for lack of a better term. You have these theorems that we were always told in school, like, "Hey, plug this in." You plug it in, or you plug into the matrix. You plug into a whole bunch of things. They've always taught they always taught us how to work with these numbers and these theorems and these equations and all these things, but they never told us what exactly what they mean. Yeah. Find X. Okay, you found X, but what does that mean? They they would never tell you what it meant, right? They never told you what it meant. Well, find you know the square root of whatever. Well, what does that mean? They were never gonna tell and you. And then they wait. <laughs> they wait so long to get it, get you an advanced math. They like call it like advanced algebra or fucking calculus. And then they start teaching you about this stuff. But even then they cloak it all in a complexity yeah. where it has nothing to do with its origins. So the origins are everything. Like when you get into the X, which could be pronounced in Greek as he, it could also be pronounced as she. This is why if you looked at any letter and you wanted to call it the mark or any symbol and you wanted to call it the mark of the beast, it would be the X. Mm -hmm. It's the he, she, it's the hermaphrodite. It's again, they, what is the caduceus look like? It has the two serpents crossing each other. That's the X's that goes back to DNA. That's a huge piece to why they want to fuck with your DNA and why they've been fucking with it since the dawn of time, because their species is not our species. And we are most likely a genetic experiment. And uh, as all things are, you know, and it's pretty easy to prove because we do it all the time today. If you look at but the, those are the meanings. You know? If you look at the minds of antiquity, like the Plato, right? You have Plato, you have the platonic solids. One of the things that the platonic solids, I believe, served a purpose for was soul vehicles. And the idea that they, that the ancients wanted to not only find ways of transporting their soul but also find ways of turning their ideas into geometric solids hence mm -hmm. where the th the theory of forms the platonic solids that's where all that came from where this is a re this is a reality this is a reflection of a more divine reality right and you have the the whole the imperfect version of the perfect version exists in this realm in this reality and Rene Descartes. I forgot what you mentioned earlier that I made, I wrote it down. You said, let's see here. You said something about sa oh, saunas. You said you got to turn up the heat or something like that. Well, it makes me think of how Descartes. Yeah. What is, what does the sauna do? Right. It detoxifies you even though it's uncomfortable as shit. Descartes turned his rooms into saunas right? and he was able to think <laughs> okay. clearer. In, in this yep. in these rooms and because it evokes this creative essence out of you it makes you uncomfortable therefore it challenges the mind therefore it creates unique thoughts or not not that thoughts are unique they're we're all being influenced but you know what i'm saying and this plays into what i was going to say earlier about the episode that I, i'll send it to you it's an episode i did on some crazy shit and it's about it involves the car <laughs> okay. and how him being sleeping in these rooms in, in this these sauna rooms right he would fall asleep led him Fuck. to have this series of dreams and according yeah. to him according well according to his story he had the the he had discovered he had a breakthrough and discovered a new science <laughs> being the cartesian coordinate system which if you look at the Cartesian coordinate system, it serves as a sort of talisman for manifestation. The co Cartesian coordinate system is at the core of, and I do CAD CAM as well, computer system design and computer system manufacturing. So I'm familiar. Any 3D modeling mm. program uses the Cartesian coordinate system. They add that 
Z axis, right? You have the X and the Y and you add that third dimension and you have the 3D modeling program, that Z axis. So boom, you have manifestation. You have the materialization of whatever that idea was that was on 2D now. And you see the trend, yeah. how it transcends the dimensions. It goes from the theory of forms, right? The, this ether, yeah. it goes into your mind. Yeah. And from there, you create the art, the, the paper medium, or you create the model of it and you plug that in. And then when you when you do the AutoCAD or whatever it was, the plans to make this building, because you talk about erecting skyscrapers and whatnot, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the manifestation. The architect as magician, yeah. which I've done an episode on that too, episode 119, check it out. The architect as magician, and, and this all plays a role into just reality itself and the way that ideas transverse. This is alchemy. This is alchemy. Yes. That, what is that? Taking from the 2D to the 3D. What is that? That's called the phoenix rising from the ashes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a flat, it's a flat plane. It has dust on it. And out of that rises this third dimensional. Listen, Waters. God. We're you know, this like this like living. But that's thoughts, right? All thoughts. I tell people this all the time. If you guys want to get rich, remind yourself that thoughts are money. Mm-hmm. Thoughts are money. And Time if you don't money. learn that, if you don't accept that, if you don't learn how to tap into that, then you're never going to be, uh, you're never going to excel with finances. And at you, the, just, you just won't. At the core of all of this is mathematics. You know, the, the math, this number, this, this, I have it written down somewhere. John D. John D. was a, a mathematician as well. And he understood mathematics Man, I have it written down somewhere. I'll, I'll have to find it because it's a dope ass, it's a dope ass quote. But yeah, I mean the the idea that they and then if we take it a step further, I think that these elites understand by embedding the mathematics into. Because you said Jamacho is more like like cryptic, cypheric type of thing where they're able to hide messages within messages, right? But what about... Precisely. That's where it comes, like with the true Hebrew Gematria, what the whole purpose was, was to reveal that mm -hmm. there's a mystic quality to the number connections through separate different words with different meanings. So for instance, if I was to type out the word podcast and come up with its numerical value... And I found out that I'll just quickly type it into a Gamatria calculator so I have something to work with. So if I type in the word podcast, it equals 78 in English Gamatria, meaning we're using the English language and A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, all the way to Z. Okay. It comes up with the number 78. So if I was to type in another word that had exactly the value of 78 in the same cipher even though it was a totally different word had no connection correlation to this word podcast the the rabbis or these high priests of this order um kabbalists they see a relationship between it all and that relationship i suppose would be more of an etheric or spiritual connection um, so this is really going back to how things are connected, um, even though they might seem totally different in nature or by definition, but the deeper meaning behind it all or the origins of it all are going back. It's another layer to add on to it of complexity, but it's a ancient system and the Chaldeans are involved in it. I know there's different forms of, of what we call gematria in every ancient civilization, because once they had letters and numbers they started doing this naturally. It was a natural way of coding. And what I suppose would be the origins of how mystery schools operate in the lower uh, entry, in the initiate levels. Meaning the, the, uh, the elect, like the, the higher orders would know about Gamatria. They would know about this coding system and they would use it in front of these uh, init uh, initiates with, with no worry because they don't even need to hide anything. That's how fucking confusing and complex it is. You feel me? The, this has a lot to do with the, even in the Bible, they talk about how Satan was cast to be mute and, and had no voice, had no ability to speak. Okay. People got to think about this. This is not, this is not isolated to Christianity. This is going across the board, the beast or whatever this, this, uh, 
this negative character, the one who goes against the hero, this this force, this force of darkness, it was voiceless. And you see in Freemasonry, they're always throwing up like the shh, you know, like covering their lips. And they're using all these hand symbols. Well, guess what? They're also using gamatria. That's a big part of it all. So symbols, hand symbols or mudras. And then you have eye winking, ways of playing with your face. Like you see umpires in, in, in baseball. They're all using the face. They're putting their finger under their nose and covering one eye. This is all sim. They're talking in, in, in this code language. Baseball is just a Freemasonic sport. You're on the diamond. It's all showing you right there what they're about, right? So anyways, my point here is that these hand symbols, the gamatria, all of it, it is to have this cryptos, this hidden occult knowledge for the elect. And then the profane would just be speaking in English or their, their own language. Um, I hope that makes sense. No, absolutely. but this way they could get away with they could get away with it all without actually hiding shit. From revelation you. You do it right in plain sight. Revelation of method t- type of thing where it's here, and that's what I tell people all the time. It's like, yeah, you don't understand it. They're not they're not talking to you, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're talking to their 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 homies that are in the circle. You're out of it. And how what was that one? comedian said it's a big club you ain't you ain't a part of it <laughs> george garland yeah so I, I i was no that's that's it like that's why when you start to decode the symbols and everything you just got to see it for what it is it's like if you spoke chinese and you were with somebody who um also spoke you had a friend that was chinese and you were in a situation where you wanted to keep yourself protected from somebody else who who spoke that your same language and you guys had your own secret code language, that would be the time you would use it. You would use it for your survival. Well, guess what? These elites are highly outnumbered. They're like 0.0001% of the world's population. We are the po- we are the elite, actually. We outnumber them substantially, but yet they fucking control us. And the reason they're able to is through this language they have and through their bloodline. And their bloodline learned that if you want to make sure that this goes smoothly for them, you put humans into this externalized belief system and it changes with the ages. So we talked a little bit earlier, uh, we were talking about getting rid of some symbols of age, of the age. Mm-hmm. Well, this is spoken about in the transition of the new Testament or the old Testament into the new Testament. You know, even Moses was saying anyone who worshiped the bull would be killed. Like there, you should not be worshiping that symbol. Why? Okay. Why? Because, Moses and the Old Testament was under Ares, which is Mars, the god of war. And before that was, right? And you start to see Taurus, that's the bull. So you can't worship that old symbol because you're not allowed to worship the old age. Then we moved in. Then we have what happens with Old Testament. Then we move into New Testament, which is Piscean age, which has to deal with getting rid of the Mars symbol. That's why the Mithraic. It was cutting of the neck of the bull, right? The, the yeah. Torak and that is the key think. to it all. Exactly. That is the key to it all. Like when you start seeing uh, that particular changeover, because I got to, I got to, um, you know, break this down just a little bit. When you're decoding why the world operates the way that it is today it has a huge connection to the fact that we're in the Piscean age, which is ruled by Jupiter, which who's the son of Jupiter. It's Mercury or Hermes. So everything in this so-called control enslavement system comes back to those two homies, but they're still hanging on to the God of war, the war machine. And what does the war machine feed? It feeds money back into the system. Mm -hmm. The war, the war machine used to not be about money. It was purely about fucking obliterating people just purely for the blood ritual sacrifice today. It's a bank. Your army is a bank. Your church is a bank. It's all for Mercury. But they did get rid of the symbols of that age. And this is tied into your sports. It's tied into Hollywood. It's tied into all of it. All of their symbols are right there in front of us. They're they're not hiding anything. It's oh, actually in plain sight. We're still charging them every single time we look at them. And with these... A corporation is the Pro- definition yeah. of a corporation is an artificially created human. Well, that's a homunculus. And when you give it a sigil, you start charging that sigil. And we know that 
in homunculus lore, because I'm a bit of a homuncologist myself. I've studied the topic uh, till you know I've exhausted that Ooh, topic. Can we can can we can we actually talk about that uh, to finish off? Yeah, the podcast? But finish what you're saying right now. So I wanted to a part of the homunculus lore is sacrificing that homunculus. Now we can get into that, but I found that quote that I was I was looking for, and it is uh, with in 1570. D had translated Euclid's elements. He was one of the first ones to translate it. And he it says here, D's approach is not just one of practical mathematics, but mathesis. And mathesis is a, a mental calculation or discipline, science, especially mathematical learning. So almost like a philosophy that also Descartes and Leibniz, which is the father of modern day binary code, by the way, which was he was enamored with the metaphysic metaphysical and he was also obsessed with Descartes and that's a whole other podcast. But it says here, this is a kind of mystical mathematics, a la Pythagoras, as if the secret language of the mind of God, which holds the universe and all its inhabitants together consists of numbers. Hence, and this is the one that just like, bro, it's like come shot. As soon as I heard it, hence magic, <laughs> <laughs> started hence, lactating a little bit yeah bro 100 <laughs> percent. hence magic is the art of discovering the equations which govern the universe oh what wow say that again hence magic is the art of discovering the equations which govern the universe bro yeah. that goes hard yeah. bro. Yeah. that goes hard it does. <laughs> i love that so that that's that's so that's, where, it's a little bit like what I said before about how math is just mother nature interpreted in symbology mm -hmm. and, and, and recognizing no the matter pattern. how you cut it up and all the sim, all the sigil magic you're going to see there's repeating number ciphers that are embedded into, you know, why do they have so many olive leaves on the branch? Why do they have so many, you know, and you start counting it all up and you see there's a reason why there's so many arrows or why they're using three lynxes instead of two and why mm -hmm. this one bloodline will use feel me yeah yeah absolutely and it's all there it's all there coded and it's uh it's like about energy canceling like if you see the number two you could almost assume that if they're facing each other like if you see one lion facing another lion that's a canceling of energy this goes deep bro what is the lion it's leo it's the sun it's and alchemy. you keep seeing like yeah, it's it's beautiful when you know how to read this all because then it's no longer Luciferian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you see that there's something so much deeper. But one 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 thing I want to say before we get into the homunculus is you brought up the word corporation. Well, what does that word start with? Corpse. Right? What do they call your dead body? They call it a corpse. They call it the Marine Corps. They spell it out as corpse. So we give it life. But it is a dead entity. It is dead. In admiralty law, a corporation is dead. So we have here corpor corpore, corpore, and body maker yeah, fashion into body form, corpus, body, dead body, animal body as a whole composed of united parts. So a chimera, a structure, system, community, corporation, political body, a guild. Meaning legally authorized entity, artificial person created by law from a group or succession of persons. Yikes. Yes. And that's that's like if you think of like LLCs and the way businesses are formed, it's like they want you to be a a limited liability company. They want you to be limited, bro. Think yeah. about these word spells. Check like this. They don't want you to be abundant. They want you to be limited. Check this. We're talking about mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. We have algebra, which the Cartesian yep. coordinate system united algebra with, with calculus and all this other stuff. And I can break this down. I can break this, this. this word down, al algebra. Bro, this blew my mind. The same word was used in English 15th, 16th century to mean bone setting. Yeah. What? So al, let's, let's break this down. Al is L, which is Saturn or Kronos. Geb saturn geb it's right there and ra the sun al is also going back to baal baal is the god of this age jupiter 
So it's all it's all kind of like being they're all the same if you really break it down. That's why it's confusing when you're learning about the mythology because you want to tend to say, oh, Venus is really a female, but no, it ain't. It's actually a male. And then you learn that no, it's actually not a male. It's a fucking hermaphrodite. <laughs> all of these the all of these mythological stories are going back to the sons of Jupiter, which is a hermaphrodite, giving his bloodline is hermaphroditic, and it continues from there. And that's why all these player characters on the world stage are hermaphrodites. That's why they only allow hermaphrodites to become famous people of worship and influence. But yeah, algebra. Al, Geb, Ra. Illuminati confirmed. My bad, bro. I was looking for that button when you were going on about the <laughs> hermaphrodites and all that shit, but I didn't find it. So this... So but, okay, so so I'll... I know we were going to get into homunculus, um, but I'll tell you the only thing that I really know about this. I haven't looked into it as deep as you have, and I wanted to watch the podcast where you uh, were getting into it, but I just I couldn't uh, allocate the time. I think the homunculus is um, the process of semen retention. I think that actually plays a huge role into it, like by not having by not going through that. <laughs> It's a stupid way of putting it, but you know, like we're, we're so conditioned today in this world of being in our lower chakras and so like sexually charged. I almost feel like that would be it. Like by never having sex or never coming, you're basically building the homunculus within you. And it's almost like that's the, that could also be what the womb is, but what's your take on it? Cause I'm sure your take on it is more like the alchemical side, um, where perhaps it comes back into the, uh, I would assume the basics of it, which is to make a person out in a laboratory setting. So I've, I've done like 13 presentations on the homunculus and I can, oh. I need at least, at least two and a half hours for it to be. So I'm going to be quick, but you're not wrong, bro. You're absolutely right. Semen retention is okay. part of it. There we go. Semen retention okay. is part of it. That's of the Taoist, the the secret mm. of the golden flower, which is Chinese internal alchemy. You see that little thing right there? That is the internal mm. homunculus. And according to the lure, I'm going to find a better picture of this. According uh, to the lure. get this on Walmart, bro? Yeah, you seen that? Walmart, Walmart's <laughs> showing you the secrets of this reality, bro. So Yeah, you could buy that poster, hang it up in your wall. Right here, you have the, the Taoist monks. They were alchemists. Keep in mind that they were also drinking tinctures full of mercury. So take this for whatever it is. <laughs> they, Man, were, they were getting lit on that mercury, bro. bro. They were drinking mercury trying to live forever. So check this out. All right. So we have the little golden That's man. A hermaphrodite. The That's lit, a hermaphrodite. The little golden man. Now, I've actually done a whole bunch of presentations on the homunculus, but I've never really done one on my show. So I'm probably just going to do like a solo mm -hmm. recording on the homunculus lore. And so the idea that by retaining, so your semen is magical, right? It creates life. Yeah. But women were seen as an incubator. Yeah, women were seen as an incubator. Those are Paracelsian words, not mine. Don't Aristotelian words, not Paracelsus, but Aristotelian biology. So you have the little golden man right? You retain your semen and you this guy would meditate for a hundred days. Now, if you, if you think about the energy coming out of this guy, like a, like a, what is it called? The toroid field, the, the, the toroid, yeah, toroid field. Mm -hmm. they, they believe that the energy would flow out and just flow out of your body. And these guys would meditate for a hundred days. And when they would reverse that energy back in on itself, through semen retention, through celibacy, through everything else and meditation, they were able to turn the, it's described as turning the light back in on itself. Now, when you turn in the light in on itself, the seminal fluids, the vital fluids in your solar plex area, they start to come together and congeal into this little man, this little thing. <sighs> And that thing, check it out, because in, in, in Taoist alchemy, they believe that the body, the body wants to escape, but the spirit doesn't. The spirit wants to stay in this mundane world. Yeah, this, it's, a, it's a demon. It's a demon. It like wants to host you. A daemon. Yeah. It's a daemon, okay? Daemon, exactly. So, it's a tasker. So by you... Yo, this is wild what you're seeing right now, because that was just a hunch. 
like I, I just kind of put together the semen retention thing and it was just a hunch that I had because I never really dove deep into this uh, subject matter. Oh, so that, that's, that, crazy. That, that's the thing about alchemy. It's it's an interdimensional. It's an interdimensional subject. So the idea of you. So you have you have the golden light body after after you Yo, congeal is this the genie in the bottle. Is this what we just figured out? Is listen, this bro. the G is semen retention the genie in the bottle? Listen, Illuminati dude. confirmed. Press the button, bro. Uh -huh. Illuminati <laughs> confirmed. Hail Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage as Jesus Christ. So this episode has brought to you by Pfizer. Uh, shout out to Pfizer. We love them. We love Joe Biden on this podcast. I know we've sponsored. talked a lot of shit. We're, yeah. we're sponsored by Moderna. <laughs> yeah, the first sponsor. So check this out, bro. Check this out. The idea of the little golden man is in order after your body passes away, after you die, your little golden man runs out into the wild and exists for you in order for you to escape samsara, okay, and reincarnation or whatever it may be. So he serves as your scapegoat in this reality and takes your, he's your placeholder, okay, and he just runs out into the wild. Now, Homunculus also turn into mythological beings, so they turn it. What does the leprechaun lead you to? Huh? Right, gold, gold, yeah, pot of gold. So I think that the magnum opus was the artificial creation of life because part of the homunculus lore is that they help you find gold. They lead you to a treasure. Why waste your time trying to make gold when you have a little golden man? That can lead you to the treasure. You know what I'm saying? Make him, and he's gonna lead you to the treasure. So you got leprechauns. You have some turn it's into like a hunting dog. Yeah, some turn into giants. Right. Others turn into other forms of mythological creatures. Now, at the core of it all, that's one aspect. That's one facet of the homunculus. Right. Another aspect of the homunculus, it's a meat and bones talisman. We talked about math. Well, mathematics is also used in the creation of talismans. What's a talisman? Well, it's a, a talisman is used for the, either the augmentation of magical abilities or to ward off something. But why was math used in, in the creation of a talisman? Well, it was used because they needed to calculate the space, uh, uh, the, the alignment of the celestial bodies in space. They needed to be done at a certain time of day or a certain time of night. A certain time of the month so time is also mathematics you use mathematics to calculate how you were saying to count to a whole bunch of different things so talismans a homunculus is a meat and bones talisman it's crowley wrote about this in the early 1900s mm -hmm. he wrote about how to create a homunculus james shelby downer talked about how they try to make create a radioactive homunculus at the trinity site when they exploded the the first atomic bomb and then you have the whole the whole Oppenheimer quoting the Bhagavad God Vita. And he's like, you know, have now become the destroyer of worlds. So you have that weird right. metaphysical connection there. But he thought that the, in this jumbo, this the gumbo, the big, huge cylinder there, they were trying to create a homunculus. Now, in the I think in the show Twin Peaks, the demon comes when they, when they set off the atomic bomb or some shit. So that's like kind of hinting at sort of like this thing where, and I had this guy send me something on Twitter actually. Or, yeah, somebody tagged me on it on Twitter, and it was after I was on Tinfoil Hat because everybody was going crazy for the homunculus after that. And I'm going to pull it up here real quick because it's, it's really eerily similar to how I believe that they're still using alchemy in, in, in today's terms. Uh, and they just call it, you know, science. Trust the science or trust the seance, if you will. And... Yeah. Let's see here. Show this. This is this is making me think about a lot of things because obviously through my study of mythology, I bring it back to Egypt as far as I could really go. And, you know, the story of Ra talking about how he created with his tears and his sweat. Yes. All the time. And then with the story of Atum, it's talking about the creation through spitting uh, or the spit could also be not only saliva, but semen. And it talks, there's an, another popular creation myth with a tomb talking about masturbation. And mm -hmm. I would assume, you know, this plays a big role in it. It's like the the uh, holding back of the energy, holding back of releasing the prana, building it, building it, building it in whatever uh, ritualized magic shit ceremony they were doing, like Crowley level stuff, who knows. But 
then the release of this energy, like you don't even need to have a woman. You don't even need to have mm -hmm. uh, actual uh, sex. You could be doing this in a way of where just the man himself. Bro, this is like wild. It's a wild fucking concept. Yeah. No, and, and remember the part of the magnum opus, when you're able to do this, the light emitted from that restructures your DNA and you're able to step outside of reality. So we got to keep that in mind. So the idea of a homunculus is so important because if you think about Crowley wrote about it up until the second month of gestation, the fetus has no soul and you're able to invoke a soul into that fetus. And that becomes the homunculus. It's going to be a regular fucking person, but it's going to have the soul of this solar deity, lunar deity, whatever other type of yeah. deity. And it's going to be invoked in that. Now we talked about how art emulates life, et cetera. They're trying to this mm -hmm. William Shakespeare said the world's a stage. So this is all coming full circle. It's the world's a stage. Now, what I believe they're trying to do is also emulate these hero with a thousand faces, these dramas of back then in today's terms. If you look at the assassination of JFK, if you look at the King Kill 33 ritual and all these different things of, of uh, you know, you had MLK die on the 33rd parallel, right? Martin Luther King Jr. You had... Uh, uh, Elvis Presley died on the 33rd parallel. The king, right? They killed, he died on yeah. there as well. So you have all these Masonic rituals, right? Let's go yeah. Ahead. Illuminati funny, you confirmed. Pick those, <laughs> you pick those two characters, M L K L <laughs> and L this. Yeah, exactly. So, and they're both kings, right? They're the, Elvis Presley was the king and MLK was the king junior. But, yeah, it's just Saturnian, but 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 what you're bringing up now it also comes full circle to what we spoke on earlier about this tear, this human sized nephilim that I do not believe has sex and makes babies the same way we do. Exactly. So, bro, like I do think that there is a possibility that some of them could get pregnant because hermaphrodites can have a period and be pregnant and have a penis. That's fact. So there's obviously, but I don't know if they could not, I would assume a very, very small percentage of them could have a vaginal birth. It's probably a cesarean. It doesn't matter to be involved in or because they, that's why all these elites have surrogates and they, they have somebody right. else get so pregnant. This, yeah. And this fucking story that this homunculus conversation is now adding an, another layer to just. Wow. And think Dope. about Jamatria, we're talking about this. how they use dates. They do cesarean. So the baby is born on this exact alignment at this exact yep. time. So that plays a role into turning that person into a talisman into now if that talisman is sacrificed or not, but part of the homunculus or part of the sigil magic, what is the, at the core of sigil magic of chaos magic, you need to burn the sigil for it to work. You need to destroy that sigil. So when people are laughing and cheering on about the Georgia Guidestones, I go, no, you stupid fucks. They're sealing the right. deal. They destroyed the sigil. Yeah. Now you're going to charge it at this one point and you're going to forget about it. And what's part of sex magic and all these other occult rituals, you bring it up into the, the, the sub subconscious it's imprinted on the subconscious. It goes back in and you're supposed to what forget about it for what so that the universe or whatever this organic thing that's going on right now manifests it so instead of celebrating you go you by me being a decoder i go no they destroyed the balloon in the sky you're happy about that no they just sealed the deal bro and they had yep. your energy since the beginning of it because you were all about yep. it on instagram TikTok, twitter and everything and you were charging the sigil bro and now they destroyed it and now they're going to feed you this next thing and you're going to completely forget about the other thing. It's an occult ritual that they were doing with you. Right. So, yep. boom, here we are. They're hacking the matrix and the homunculus plays a vital role into this because think about it. If you're able to invoke and replay these dramas of antiquity that they used back then to god knows what right the the Eleusinian mysteries we just we still don't know what they were doing there the orphic mysteries we still don't know what they were doing there part i think part of it was larping right live action role playing and reenacting <laughs> no seriously bro and reenacting because yeah, 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 what yeah, are yeah. the what are the rites and rituals that secret societies do they recite and they do all these things with their little swords and bro 
Come on, yep. dude. I mean, it's all it's part like of it. a kickoff in football, a kickoff yes. in football where they kick the ball and then they catch it. And now it's two teams running into each other. Like, yeah, dude, yeah, dude. like if they could if they could figure out a way to create entertainment out of the war ritual reenactment, then they're getting your prana. But we we brought up some like really sick topics just like in the last couple of of moments. Um, and it's stuff that I talk about all the time, like. Think about that Chinese spy balloon thing. It took me a couple minutes to decode what was going on there. Like, first of all, it's a just the word balloon. It is Baal and Loon, which is Luna. So you have the divine masculine, divine feminine. That's all polarities. But they made it look like a moon. Like, it looked like a moon in the sky. It basically just looked like a, a full fucking moon. And egg, it was around, <laughs> And it was around a full moon that they did it. The recent full moon just a yes. couple days ago. And ch- people need to see the word spell with China. China spelled backwards is Anik or Enoch, which is Mercury or Hermes. And this plays a big role in like the reestablishment of the power hierarchy, the power trinity that we're moving into, which was started with C-19 and Wuhan. So I have a, I think I talked about this on my last podcast, how the holy trinity, uh, it's the unholy trinity of Washington, D.C., um, city of london as well as rome or the vatican more specifically those three obelisks that's all coming to an end one ritual at a time and it's being put into new centers you know but if we think of the current babylon uh it is london baby london babylon that is coming coming to pieces through the recent uh ritual they had with the queen then you have the current pope is clearly not a religious ruling uh, leader at all. He's a Jesuit. Uh, that's all obvious. That's about taking the top three Abrahamic religions and bringing it into a unification system, which will then unify all religions and create a global religion, a one world religion. That's that agenda of this current pope. And that's obvious as well. Taking all the things that they used to believe in and just turning it upside on its head or destroying the symbols of the old age because we are now moving into Aquarius which is ruled by Saturn which is a good thing but these parasites that are running this current show are losing power day by day as we move into that system so people got to pay attention to this as it's being ritualed 9-11 was to put New York in the hot seat through the ritual we have the death of the queen which was right around that same time with the Georgia Guidestones bullshit and then we had Wuhan Wuhan is huge, a huge player in all of this. And that's why you're seeing destabilization in that part of the world. That's why Russia is becoming part of the conversation again. They're wiping out that part of Asia because it's going to be a new center for the new culture that they reestablish of the new age. It will become the new Eden. Currently, Currently, America is the Garden of Eden. And that's why it runs the world. America is the one world, uh, the English language that we speak here in America through Hollywood is what influences the Hollywood and our entertainment industry is what influences the world to speak this language. It's the promoter or the advertisement of this language. Then we have our money system is the global reserve currency, the U.S. dollar. It is the world reserve through the, the banking system with the federal reserve system. And then we have all the other control through military, correct? the literally military bases at all corners of of every country control everywhere. That system is in process of changing guard. Um, So studying the Knights Templar and the Teutonic Knights and what's going on with them, we're, we're at a really pivotal time. So all I say to everyone, get ready for more and more rituals and black swan events to unfold. Just do not like, like Quan said, don't give it your fucking energy. Don't praise or get happy with this shit. This is not, positive Mm -hmm. this is just about this is about trapping prana into a date a ritual everything that has to deal with how they maintain power whether you're angry sad happy cheering it or you're booing it doesn't matter they're getting your prana then they have a ritual to take that energy and disperse it back to them to this ruling class and it's going to continue to work time and time again if we give it energy and now that they have the internet on their side like they have shit like trending on Twitter. It makes it even easier for them mm-hmm. to do this stuff. Imagine we had JFK's assass- assassination during the, the age of TikTok. <laughs> 
imagine how much prana that would have harnessed like imagine bro imagine we had uh martin luther king's assassination but with also iphones in our pockets all the angles so they, their work is their work is cut out for them bro because now they could do cgi fake artificial assassinations they could show you a person speaking and put a completely different face on them it looks almost realistic the the facial expressions look real you know what i'm talking about like yep. this uh ai face generation shit they could do we're 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 there like we're right there at the breaking at the at the cutting edge of optics and manipulating um what people are are seeing and believing I'm going to leave you with one more thing, bro, because you're talking about, we talked about the monetary system and you keep bringing it up. Well, the Federal Reserve, you know, it's a private corporation, right? It's a private, mm -hmm. privately owned entity. Well, what is it also? It's also the creature of Jekyll Island. That's such a good point. So these the guys. The Titanic sinking ritual. Yeah. And who who was also at the core of it all? John D. Rockefeller. I mean, I'm sure that's just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nothing to see here. So, again, dude, I think it's all connected. This was a wild ride. And hopefully people stuck around. It's almost three hours. And I yeah, man. Well, I think you should take a note on that. You should take a note on the sinking of the Titanic and how that was a water-based ritual and how lately the rituals we've been experiencing are air-based because um, mm. that could be an awesome conversation about the tran oh, the transition shit. into the age of, of Aquarius. You know, they're hitting us with these rituals on in a specific way because they need to. It's all part of the magic um, of the age. So, yeah, let's get into that uh, on the next podcast, too. Yeah, dude. I wrote it down here. Bro, you were fucking great. This really... I appreciate you know, I appreciate you uh, having me on, brother, and free-flowing this one. I had I had this comment before, you know, not, not to stroke your nipples, but I had somebody go, love the content, but I hate the homoerotic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk about my nipples? I'm like, what, bro? I mean, if it makes my nipples hard... It makes my nipples hard, right? You got to embrace the nipples, <laughs> you know? You got to I think people just people just don't want to have fun with this. Like I'm just, I'm all about having fun and seeing the comedy yeah, in it all cuz at the end of the day like it is serious, but I told somebody this one time, uh it might be a good place to end it. It's like the most memorable moments of your life are the moments where you laugh so hard that you start crying mm -hmm. or the moments where you cry so hard that you start laughing. <laughs> Yeah, Those bro. are the most memorable moments in life. So like, I just try to look at this, like it's a, it's a, it's a wild ride. It's fun. You know, let it become hilarious. It's cosmic comedy. The more serious we take it, the more it consumes us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I think it's, it's great to have an open mind to discussion and to get to have this transmission. Uh, so I appreciate you appreciate you sharing this with your audience. And I keep promoting your work over on my live streams. And whenever you're brought up, I know some, some people have jumped over from, my community so it's all love yeah i appreciate that bro and i appreciate you man you you bring a lot to the table and i think it's important to have these conversations and i'm really happy you jumped on with me today can you plug your stuff bro so where can people find you and i'll post all your links in the description as well sure yeah over on my channel um i do uh one youtube video a week typically about cryptocurrency and the markets through a decoder's perspective so kind of not the most um you know, normal way of looking at the market. It's very esoteric and revealing, and that's kind of my vibe. And then I do a live stream every week that's not about crypto at all. So if you're somebody who's not care, if you don't care about the finances or the money or the stock market, you could tune into the live streams. I do those on Saturdays, free on my channel, available. And um, those run sometimes two to three hours. So they're like marathon streams. And then outside of that, I have my Patreon where I do exclusive content, one podcast a week centered on the markets and got my discord community hooked up into that and all my exclusive content i do some pretty crazy decodes over there as well i just did a decode of super bowl 57 and in that decode i show you how it's connected to past events not only with football or sports but like literally to the events that are 
tied to the symbols of the teams and the year we're in. And I go really deep. Like th- this current Super Bowl is connected to skull and bones being formed 191 years ago, as well as, as the Trail of Tears or the Indian Removal Act. And, you know, we have the Chiefs going against the Eagles. So I go hard on those decodes if people are um, interested in stuff like that and they want to learn more about Gamatria. So, oh, yeah. And then my website, watersabove.com, if you want to check out anything else I'm working on. Awesome. Yes. Go support. Go show some love. I appreciate you, Waters Above. This was great. And as always, everyone, catch you on the other side.